Hey, remember to save that battery too when you're not using it, because it'll die. All right, cool. First race of the night. Welcome in, everybody, as you watch here on YouTube Live. It is the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival, and we are ready for a big night of racing here at Lipscomb Academy in the Music City. My name is Will Bowling. Glad to have you with us throughout the evening. We have got a packed lineup of racing ready for you tonight, and it starts with the Men's Masters Mile, and we are off and running here in race number one. So we've got Stuart Ellington, Jeremy Neff, Nick Morgan, Chip Owens, Francis Burnett, Bernard Henry, Dan King, Dale Flanders, and Doug Cross set to race in our first race. And Music City Distance Carnival has had a lot of Masters World Records. You go back last year, Brad Barton's 50-year-old world record of 419.59 took five and a half seconds off of the previous record. So that right now is the gold standard for Masters races in the Music City Distance Carnival. Go back to 2012, Anthony Whiteman ran 358.96. That was the first ever sub four by a Master at the time. And that's been the history of the Masters races here at the Music City Distance Carnival. There has been fantastic Masters racing. So tonight it's the 60-year-old World record that's going to be under attack. Dan King from Boulder, Colorado, ran 503.5 solo at 5,000 feet two months ago. The marks he'll be chasing, the U.S. record of 453.01 and the world record of 451.85. So about 73.5 per lap for the U.S. record, 72.5 per lap for the world record. And right now it is Stuart Ellington, 70.19 through the first lap and right on schedule Dan King right behind him in 7244 Chip Owens Doug Cross rounding out the top 4 a quarter of the way through our Masters mile Lipscomb Academy here in Nashville different venue different setup we assure you that people are masked up they are socially distanced and it's going to be a fun afternoon. Hope you stick with us here throughout our schedule in this meet tonight. For what we've got ready for you here at the Music City Distance Carnival, going to be an awfully fun evening of elite races. Some elite high schoolers are going to be a part of the professional scene in this meet. Certainly a lot of fun throughout the evening. Halfway through, it's Ellington continuing to lead 220.72 through a half mile. Dan King right there as well, 227.55. Chip Owens, 227.86. Doug Cross in fourth right now, but it is Stuart Ellington all out in front right now on an excellent pace. So Ellington and King, 600 meters to go. 60-year-old U.S. record and the 60-year-old world record. That's what we're looking for, 453 and 451, and they were at 220 halfway through. Ellington followed by King as they come into the straightaway here, and they're going to have the bell lap to get ready to crank this thing home and see how quickly they can finish up. A one lap to go, 332.34, the time for Ellington. 342.97 with 400 meters remaining for Dan King. 343.76 for Chip Owens in our first race of the night here at Lipscomb. 
Ellington continuing to look strong. You've got the hard stride of Dan King in second right now. These guys chasing and fighting for every second over this final 200 plus meters. But as it has been throughout the first three plus laps, Stuart Ellington continuing to lead as he will head into the final straightaway with an opportunity for an excellent time right here. Going to be below five minutes. How far below is it going to be? Dan King not far behind him as well. Stuart Ellington into the final straightaway. He will surge through the end of this race. And an excellent time there. Let's see what that is. 437.65, and it's corrected on my screen now. That is Jeremy Neff who takes the win. 437.65, the winning time. And it's Ellington second, 445.39. My apologies on that. We're learning how to watch a track meet and call it from a monitor today, just like everybody else for the first time. Third place, Dan King, 457.27, so just off that record pace for him, but certainly an excellent race. Chip Owens, Doug Cross, rounding out your top five. So throughout the night, you'll be hearing from the winners, be hearing from some of the top competitors. Billy Saveco is here. He's going to chat with our top couple of runners here in a couple of moments. But for right now, we'll take a break and hear from those winners. Get the reaction in a couple of moments down track side here. One race down on the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival.
Record set by Leslie Hintz back in Culver City, Colorado in July 2018, 539.84. That's certainly still within the reach of these runners right here. So Mercado, Noble, and Stobe. A little bit of separation here. But it's Mercado and Noble. And now Noble's going to make the move around the outside. Emily Noble of Atlanta Track Club. All right on the outside shoulder of Julie Mercado. She's going to take the bell right here. So 413 for these two ladies with 400 meters remaining. Officially at three quarters of a mile, 412.54 for Mercado. Mercado, Noble, and Stowe. That's how it's been for all three laps here. That last lap, they picked up the pace a little bit there at the end, 83.2 for both of those ladies after running 85 and 84 on the first two laps. A little bit of separation now for Julie Mercado. Just 200 plus meters remaining for her. 457, a little ways past 200 to go. And this is gonna be a solid time right here for the end of this race. Final straightaway now for Mercado. Opening up a little bit of a gap on the other two members of this field. And it looks like she is going to be your winner. Now it's a matter of what time. Mercado all the way to the line, 534. Now they'll call it 533.41, or 39 rather. Excellent time there for Julie Mercado taking your women's master's mile. A fantastic final lap as well in 120.85 on that final 400. Emily Noble takes second in 537.51. And Judy Stobe of Central Park Track Club, 554.12 to round out your field in the master's women's mile. Lots more running coming up and lots of conversations with Billy Sveco. He's going to be on site with us all night here at the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival talking with some of the winners, interviewing many of the competitors here this evening. We'll take a quick break and we'll get a report for Billy coming up in a couple of moments. You're watching the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival. Lots more coming up. Stay with us tonight from Nashville.
that marathons and triathlons and stuff yeah. was, you know, tack on more than 20, 30 miles a week, you know. Okay. So started, uh, you know, running more miles at slower paces. And, uh, man, about 18 months ago, I just started, like, chipping away, you know. And, and uh, lo and behold, you know, last year at this meet, I ran a 456. Okay. And then, um, you know, this year with a little bit more time under my belt. Yep. Here I am. So that's my my story. That's amazing. Where, where yeah. are you going to do next? What are you going to do to continue to lower that time? Um, you know, just continue that's to run story. with uh, with my family. Uh, they're awesome. Each one of my kids, um, Franklin Rotor Runners, by by you know, they're the best runner you know group in the in the world. So appreciate Haskell and Chad and and Zach and you know everybody. So. Um, that's yeah, awesome. That's are you going to stick to the mile? Are you going to try 5Ks? Anything <laughs> different? Like, would you try another event? Uh, 5Ks hurt really bad. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and I'm still very bad at them. But I'll, I'll, I'll continue to work at all of them, you know. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you, prediction for next year? MCDC, what are you going for? Uh, what was this, 437? 437, I don't know the exact decimal. If it was 0.9, then next year I'm going for 0.8. All right, all right, all right. Just a little yeah. better. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Tell me one fun fact about yourself non-running related. Fun fact. Yes. Um, uh, this is probably the one of the funnest things about my life. Uh, we have a daughter, Maisie, who has Down syndrome. Okay. She's absolutely the best. She's uh, awesome. she is like the fun in our family. So. Awesome. That's magical. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome, yeah. man. Thank you so much. Appreciate absolutely. it. Good luck. We'll see you next All year. Right, I don't man. know if I'm allowed to do that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. running was that like you know it's very indi individualized but it's also um so you're not with a team but like you said you have so many experience in that area that you know they're going to you know cross that line and like that so as long as you can take your blood out of the hole and say you know there's no better baseball team out there and you know you do see it you know the size and all these things that you have so i like that running is also you know i like the fact that you have different things that are like running down syndrome everyone kind of thinks that they're
Back with you at the Music City Distance Carnival. It is time for our first elite section of the nights. And folks, there are going to be a lot of elite races coming up this evening here at Lipscomb Academy. If you're just now joining us, a couple of excellent Masters races earlier. Men's and women's miles. And now we're going to start with the women's 800-meter run. Got two sections here. We're going to start with the slower section of the two here at, well, just about five minutes in the women's 800. Men's 800 coming up at 8, and then the women's faster section of the 800-meter run at 8.30. So 12 runners are set to race. We're going to start with Julia Rice wearing hip number one, 201.99 from District Track Club, representing Under Armour. Ursula Farrow will be hip number two. Rachel Pokratsky, former of formerly of Virginia Tech, 800 PB of 202.67 that she ran back in May of 2017 in Atlanta, 2019 season best of 203.99. She'll be wearing hip number three. Hip number four is Rachel Walters of Atlanta Track Club, a personal best of 204.15. And she is followed by one of the elite high schoolers that we're going to be seeing tonight. That is Bailey Goggins, a high school senior from Marble Falls High School in Texas. She's got a personal best of 204.15, and she is looking for a U.S. all-time top 10 mark, and that would be 202.4 or better. you got to go way back to 1974 for the U.S. number 10 all-time for a high school girl in the 800-meter run. That was set by Robin Campbell. So 202.4, that's the mark Bailey Goggins is looking for to be a U.S. top 10 all-time for a high school 800-meter run. Runner. Hip number six, Annette Melcher from Colorado Springs Track Club. Hip number seven is Brianna Stratz. Hip eight is Carson Johnson. Hip nine, Amaya Turner. And hip number 10 is Maria Marcia. Hip 11, Lindsay Putman. And hip number 12, Natalie Zinn. So 12 ladies, including one of the elite high school 800 meter runners ever, are going to take to the track here under the lights at Lipscomb Academy coming up in a couple of moments. So Bailey Goggins will wear hip number five. She's gonna be right in the middle of this field. All the way from Texas, you got Pokratsky with a 203 or 202 personal best. You got Julia Reisk. She's got the best personal best in this field of 201.99. Formerly an Ohio State Buckeye and a career best of 205.02 that she ran in Austin. She took a lot of time off of that mark in 2019 in June at Princeton, running 201.99. So it looks like Rice actually is a scratch for this one, so that'll change things a little bit. So now the best personal best coming in belonging to Carson Johnson of Colorado Springs Track Club at 202.39. But Bailey Goggins, the high school senior wearing hip number five right there in the middle of your screen. She is going to be the runner to watch here. Can she get an all-time U.S. top ten mark here in this race? It is going to be quick. First of two sections of the City Auto Women's 800 meter run with the faster section coming up just under an hour and the men set to run at 7 p.m. here local time in Nashville. We'll be hearing from Billy Saveco tonight. He's down trackside. He'll talk with the winners, talk with some of the big names. Those names, including Emma Coburn, Corey McGee, will be hearing those names coming up soon. But first, it's the first section of the women's 800. Final instructions given. Let's race. So here we go. Ursula Farrow, Rachel Pukratsky, Rachel Walters, Bailey Goggins, Annette Melcher, Brianna Stratz, Carson Johnson, Amaya Turner, Maria Marcia, Lindsay Putman, and Natalie Zid. We are off and running. On the inside, it's Ursula Farrow is going to go to the front alongside Amaya Turner. 
We are looking for Goggins on the inside rail. Now she's going to try to get on the outside of all these ladies, on the outside shoulder of Strats and Pokratsky as they come through at about 29.5 there through the first 200 meters. Two of the top 10 all-time high school 800-meter performances have taken place at MCDC. Both of them last year, Caitlin Collier, number five all-time at 2 flat 85, a thing moo, 201.38. Can Bailey Goggins add her name to that list of U.S. top 10 competitors that have entered the top 10 at the Music City Distance Carnival? Out in front, Carson Johnson of Colorado Springs Track Club on our outside shoulder, Rachel Pokratsky, as they come through in about 62.8 officially for Carson Johnson, followed by Pokratsky at 62.84. Bailey Goggins, third through 400 at 62.98. Here they come down the straightaway, and Goggins is going to make a move to the outside. On the outside shoulder of Pokratsky. Here comes Ursula Farrow on the outside. It is still anybody's race as they come to 200 meters remaining, 134. They are right on pace, a 32-second 200 right there. Goggins, she needs 202.4 to crack the top 10 all time in the United States for a high school runner. Around the final turn they go, and it's Pokratsky, it's Farrow, it's Goggins the high schooler. Under the lights here as the setting sun in Nashville, Tennessee, and it's Ursula Farrow now making the final move. Farrow on the outside, Pokratsky on the inside, and it will be Farrow. First winner of the night, 205.33. For Farrow of Garden State Track Club, she's followed by just seven hundredths of a second later by Rachel Pokratsky of District Track Club representing Under Armour. Carson Johnson finishes third in 205.9 and an excellent time for Bailey Goggins. Just a couple of seconds off of her personal best. You can see it there on your screen now. 206.07 and she's still got another year of high school left ahead of her. So Goggins fourth at an elite section of women's half-milers. And at Melcher, rounds out the top five at 207.37. Five ladies at 207 or better. And it's the first win of the night belonging to Ursula Farrow. Coming up in a couple of moments, we're going to be hearing from Billy Saveco. We're going to be hearing from him a lot tonight. As you get to know, get to catch up with some of the top elite runners that will be taking the track here at the Music City Distance Carnival. So if you're just now joining us, let's set up the meet schedule tonight. One section of 800 is out of the way. And the faster section is going to come up a little bit later. That's going to be at 7.30 Central Time here in Nashville. But the men's 800, the next race on the track, that's just about 20 minutes away tonight from Lipscomb Academy just outside of downtown Nashville. The Lever men's mile run, that's going to be at 7.50 local time following the elite women's 800 at 7.30. Then you've got the men's 1500, 8.15 p.m. Under the lights here at Lipscomb Academy, all time central, of course. Women's 1500 at 8.35, that's where you're going to see Emma Coburn, Corey McGee, an excellent, excellent group of ladies that are going to be in the low fours in that women's 1500. Then at 9 o'clock, we're going to slow things down a bit. Go to the men's 5,000-meter run, brought to you by Ponzi Law. Women's 5K at 9.30, and we will finish off with the one high school section of the meet. That's going to be the high school boys' 3,200-meter run. Athletes from all over, Texas, New Jersey, of course, the Volunteer State going to be represented in that race as well. And then the budding star of high school distance runner, in the state of Tennessee, Jenna Hutchins, an upcoming junior from Science Hill, Tennessee, Science Hill High School up there in Johnson City. She is going to take the track for the final event of the meet at 10.30 tonight. The Tennessee state record holder in the mile, she's looking to get under 10 minutes in the 3,200. And if she just gets under 10.30, she'd just be the sixth girl ever in Tennessee high school running to get under 10.30 in the 3,200. So that's all coming up. Take a quick break here, and in a moment, you're going to be hearing from Billy Saveco. And as I look over to my right, here from my location, 
We're going to send it over to Billy right now alongside our winner, Ursula Farrow. Ursula Farrow, she's the winner of the women's 800B race. Um, nice. Yeah. Nice to be racing again. Talk about your day. Um, really, just wanted to go out there and really just um, do my best. Wasn't really racing for time. Yeah. Just go out there and compete. So, and that's yeah, what you did. It was all the way to the finish. So what was yeah. going through your head on that last home stretch, you know? Um, Trying to get to compete again. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's amazing just to be out here, you know? Really didn't think I was going to race. Uh, I decided to race at last minute. So really to come out here and to compete just means a lot. Yeah, all the way yeah. from New Jersey. Are you at the New Jersey? Uh... Um, yes, I run for Garden State. Uh, uh, but I train with Derek Thompson. So oh, okay. yeah, it's it's doing great right now. Cool. Do you have anything else on your schedule? Or what are you looking forward to? Or what did you take from this race? Um, really? Just having fun, being able to go out there and compete. That's what it's all about. You know, not just about, you know, being serious all the time. So Love it. really, I have fun today. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. One, one fun fact about yourself, non-running related. We'll give them some fun stuff. <laughs> um, I guess I love watching Netflix. Can't wait to see the new Stranger Things. Yes. When are they releasing it? Yes. I don't even know when they're releasing it. I just watched Actually, season three uh, but again. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. Can't wait to see that. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Congrats. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, next up, guys, we're going to bring in the high schooler, Bailey Goggins. Come on, Bailey. Jump on in. Oh, I could switch with you, I guess. Awesome. So here we go. We got Bailey Goggins. She just ran with the big dogs in that 800. You know, she's coming all the way from Texas. Yep. That's awesome. Talk about what the experience was like for you today. Um, this was a pretty crazy experience for me just because I haven't raced in like an actual race setting in so long. It yeah. just felt really weird to have to worry about like getting boxed in, going out fast. So I didn't necessarily get the time I wanted, but I'm really happy to get to race against all these wonderful women. And they're very talented. Yeah. And I feel like I gained a lot of race experience from it. Absolutely. Is this your first time racing against the pros? Uh, no, sir. I've run at Texas Relays. Oh, yes. I've, I've run at Texas <laughs> Relays, too. Love it down there. Yes. Awesome. Well, you know, it's amazing to see track back, right? Mm -hmm. It's a big thing we've been waiting for, and you finally got to, you know, let it rip, I guess, basically. Yeah. Um, talk about, you know, what do you have upcoming next, or what are some um, other things you're going to be looking forward to? I'm going to be shutting down my season after this. Okay. Just because it's been a long time, yeah. and I'm ready to, like, take a few, a few weeks off, get fresh again, and then I'll start training for indoor if that happens, or... Just for my senior year of high school next year. Yeah, so what are some things you've been doing in this trying time to, to kind of maintain positivity and to maintain, uh, I guess, motivation to, to work out? Um, well, lately I've gotten to run with, like, other runners again. Yeah. So that's been good. I've been, like, pushing myself. And then all those races, I like something to train for. Yep. So I got to do a few races this summer. I was really happy about that. And I got to lower my PR. So that was exciting. Awesome, awesome. So... You know, I'm sure you're one of the highest recruits in the country. What are some schools? Are you allowed to talk about what some schools you're uh, thinking about? Or is that quiet still? I'm not sure yet, <laughs> but I've definitely narrowed it down, and I have about a top five in mind. Okay, cool. So, we'll cool, see cool. what happens with that. Hopefully I get to visit, or we'll just see what happens. Yeah, no, that's the most fun yeah. experience. If I have any advice to you, I would tell you to take every uh -huh. every trip you can mm -hmm. to make sure you experience every little piece of it, because a lot of people go to the first one or two, and they're like, that's it. Yeah. Make sure you experience every school and uh, make sure you have fun with it like you yeah. said that's the most important thing at the end of the day mm -hmm. so stay positive and I hope you continue to do well thank you so much no thank you very much appreciate it thank all you right guys me. next up we have what is this some more 800s it's gonna be ready
National Anthem has been sung. Women's 800 has started. It is finished, and now it is time for two sections of the men's 800-meter run here at the Music City Distance Carnival. Will Bowling back here with you. Glad to have you alongside us. It is good to be watching live sports. It is even better to be watching live track and field. We have got nine men in this faster section of the 800, and it is going to be awfully fast. Hip number one is Robert Downs. Personal best of 146.46 for him. Hip number two, Alex Amonqua. Hip three, the collegiate record holder, Michael Saruni, with a personal best of 143.25, a season best 151.3. He ran 143.25 back in April, and a 2019 best of 143.7 in Monaco on July the 12th. Hip number four is Idos Ibadine. He leads this field with a... 144.81 season best that he ran back on August the 1st. Hip 5, Kwamel Prince. Hip 6, Eric Sawinski. Hip 7 is Vincent Crisp. Hip 8, Tennessee native from Memphis University School in the 901, Carlton Orange. And hip number 9, John Lewis. All of these men with career bests 147 and better. This will be quick. So it's down, Zamanqua, Saruni, Ibadin, Prince, Sawinski, Crisp, Orange, and Lewis as we get set for heat number one of the men's 800-meter run. I'll cut to the inside, see who gets the early lead here. That's going to be Vincent Crisp of District Track Club and Under Armour. Way on the outside there, John Lewis wearing hip number nine in our first section of the 800. Awfully quick here through the opening 200 meters. It's Lewis out in front, followed by Crisp. Saruni in there as well, representing Adidas, wearing that white singlet, but still anybody's race as they come in, single file through a quarter mile. Lewis, Crisp, Saruni, Ido Sibadin in there as well. Through 400 meters, halfway home in this men's 800-meter run. It is going to be an awfully quick finish under the lights here in Nashville, Tennessee at Lipscomb Academy. So now out in front, it is Vincent Crisp, the pacer off. Saruni in there, Ibadine as well. Crisp looking strong. Anybody's race as Alex Amonqua tries to surge to the outside as well. On the inside, Michael Saruni from Adidas. It is going to be an awfully tight finish as they turn for home onto the straightaway. Anybody's race, who wants it more? On the outside, Downs. Running away from him, Saruni. All the way to the line they come. It is going to be tight. And I believe it was Saruni on the inside. It was 146-13 for Michael Saruni, the collegiate record holder, comes to Nashville and leaves victorious. Season best for Saruni, season best for Kwamel Prince, 146-42 for second. As you see, the results tabulating right there on your computer screen. What a race it was. The first men's elite section of the night. Robert Downs coming third. Eric Sawinski fourth. Alex Amonqua, 147-11. That was awfully quick and an awfully close finish there at the end. So Saruni taking five seconds off the last time he raced in 2020. 146-13 for him, the winning time. Just three-tenths of a second. What a finish that was as well from Kwamel Prince, who was awfully strong there towards the end. Don't have official splits on that final 400, but just from looking at it from our vantage point, we can certainly tell you that it was quick. So one heat down and one heat to go in the men's 800-meter run. We've got seven gentlemen who are scheduled to race in section number two. That's coming up in a couple of minutes, looks like. A few final instructions being given out to those guys. You've got 
at Kimboy headlining that field with a personal best of 144.77 that he ran three Julys ago up in New York in 2017. Seven guys, though, we'll tell you a little bit more about him coming up in a moment. Take a quick breather here in Section 2, coming right up. Here we go. Yeah, what's up, guys? Billy Savecco, Kumel Prince. Just took second, I think. Close one at the end. It was tough right down at the end. Uh, 146. Talk about it, man. You're running again. You're racing. Oh, hey. Talk about this. That was a good one, man. I came out here with a game plan, trying to win it all, but it didn't happen. But happy with the results. Uh, this is my last one, so about to go back home and just have a good off season and get ready for next year. Yeah, it was a close. It was a close match all the way to the end there. Um, 200, huge bunch. You know what was going through your head, and what did you have to do to, to finish that strong? Well, everybody kind of bunched up, and I thought it was going to be, like, stretched out because we had a nice rabbit to pace, but yeah, everybody got bunched up, so I had to go to lane two and try to finish, but he had a good kick, so I didn't, wasn't able to catch him, so I got him next time, I guess. Yeah, how good does it feel, though, I guess, just to end with an actual race, you know? You know, you've been waiting this whole time. You actually got to race against other people. Talk about that. Man, it's great, man, having everybody just come out and run. Like, we've all been training for a long time, and just finally get some competition It's what we need, man. Like. Wish it could be a lot more, but we know the circumstances, so we're just happy to be out here and running. Cool. So, so give me some, give me one fun fact about yourself, non-running related. You like to spice it up a little bit here. Oh man, I have a son on the way next month. Congrats! September congrats. 25th. I can't wait. So, about to go home. Name? And get ready Do you have a him. name? Titan. Titan. Yeah. Oh. Titan. Shout out to Titan when you see this. All right. All right. Awesome, yeah. man. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll look for you next year. All right. Good luck. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Cheers. You bought your dream car online. Woo! and had it delivered right to your door. Too bad you couldn't see both sides of the story. Hey! 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 At City Auto, we've got a gazillion cars on our website and in person for you to touch, hear, smell, and really see, including the one that's just right for you. City Auto, start online, finish in person.
right, Cody, I'm ready. One more heat of the men's 800 coming right up. Six guys are going to be racing here in a minute. Introduced to some empty stands and some socially distanced competitors who are here to race and waiting to race here at Lipscomb Academy in Nashville. Certainly a unique experience for everybody here. Not as many races, but certainly the ones that we do have are electric, like that last one that we just saw. Ed Kimboy, he's going to be headlining section number two of the men's 800-meter run, a 144.77 career best that he ran in July of 2017 back in New York. 2015 SEC champ, a 29, 2019 season best for Ed Kimboy of 147.86. Ran that May of 2019 down in Marietta. In 2018, Kimboy actually ran his season best here at the Music City Distance Carnival. Not physically here at Lipscomb. It was at Vandy back in 2018. Uh, but in that race, ran 146.07. So Brandon Phillips, Darius Kipiego, Ed Kimboy in the middle, James Gilrith, Cameron Laverty, and Michael Twist, the gentleman who will race here tonight in Section 2. So here we go, Phillips, Kipiego, Kimboy, Gilrith, Laverty, and Twist for our second and final heat of the men's 800-meter run. Coming up, hope you'll stick with us, a very fast section of the women's 800, including the last two NCAA outdoor champions who are going to be running in a couple of minutes in the women's 800. That one's set for 7.30. James Gilrith of Team Green, a personal best for him of 146.7. There he is at the front of your screen, leading Ed Kimboy and Cameron Laverty here in our second section. Darius Kipiego competing and attached on the rail in fourth right now, followed closely by Michael Twist and Brandon Phillips. Single file, still anybody's race, though, as they near a quarter mile. We'll try to get a watch on this first 400-meter split, but it is going to be awfully quick. About at 53-5 for the leader there. That's still Gilrith out in front. 54.05 officially. And a little bit of separation here. Out in front for Darius Kipiego, I beg your pardon. Hip number's tough to read on a monitor. That's sports in 2020 for you. Kimboy in second right now. Gilreath there as well. And now move on the outside here. Michael Twist. In the mix as well as they turn for home, it's still Darius Kipiego out in front. Or it is Gilrith. Gilrith wearing hip number five of Team Green. Can he take it to the line? Looks like he will. Followed by Kipiego and Kimboy. 149.5. James Gilrith of Team Green, your winner, followed by Darius Kipiego, 149.98. Ed Kemboy of Atlanta Track Club, third, 150.3. So apologies for the mix up there as well. On our screen, we're watching on here, trying to make out these numbers as best we can, but that's where you shrug and say, that's 2020 for you right there. So a good race, nonetheless. James Gilrith, you see it right there on your screen, 149.5, followed by Kipiego, 149.98. So two men under. 150 tonight in the humid Saturday night heat here in Nashville, Tennessee. Laverty Phillips and Twist routing out your field in Section 2. So coming up in a moment, we'll get another report from Billy Saveco, the toad, the one and only. He's alongside us, and in about 10, 15 minutes, we're going to preview what is an elite field of women's half-milers led by Jasmine Frey, Sammy Watson, Kayla Edwards, it is going to be an excellent race coming up in about 15 minutes. We'll tell you about it in 5 to 10. But until then, we'll take a quick breather. We'll hear from Billy here in a moment. Get you ready for the Women's 800 as you watch the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival.
think we are just about on. So we're gonna roll with it. We're waiting for the sign. All right, here we go. Yo, what's up guys, Billy Saveco. We are with Darius Kipiego. 800, you're racing again? Talk about this. Yeah, I mean, I was really excited to come down here and travel with all these pro runners. I mean, this is kind of like the first like, kind of pro me. I ran a couple of pros two weeks ago when yeah. ran 148. But yeah, I was uh, super excited to just come down here and you know, try to run another fast race as long as I, you know, with all this, all this COVID stuff to yeah. kind of find races. So I was super excited to, you know, find this and uh, sign up. So I think you just broke 150, 149.99, yeah. which is kind of a cool thing. I know you've been there before, but how does it feel to run that fast again? Oh, I mean, it feels uh, really good. I need to know that I'm still under that 150 shape. But, yeah. you know, I was kind of disappointed with uh, the time that I had. You know, I was kind of aiming for, yeah. you know, kind of more up there. But and I kind of went out a little bit too slow than I wanted to. But it's okay. I just tried to, you know, come back faster and try to kind of win my heat. But, you know, everything doesn't always go as planned. No, it's fine. But you got amazing experience, like you said, mingling with the pros, warming up, racing some of these guys. It's awesome. What's uh, What was the coolest thing from today? Well, I mean, just, uh, you know, going over and uh, with the, just seeing all the pros right there, you know, warming up yeah. and stretching. Just this is an environment you can tell, you know, it's a very serious and it's just uh, amazing to see all these, you know, people that you, you wouldn't really be able to see, you know, when I went to the armory, you know, yeah. it's like, I know the pros were separated from everyone else. So just to be able to kind of see everyone, you know, how focused they are is their livelihood. And so it's really cool just to be around them. Yeah, well, someday you'll be there if you just keep it up, you know, stay positive and stay focused and that, that'll be you one day. I hope so. Um, so give me one fun fact about yourself non-running related i try to keep it fun here um one fun fact i mean i uh, love to play the piano that's one thing yeah no what's your favorite what's your favorite song the am out uh beethoven uh for elise that's Woo! my favorite song all right all right man thank you so much good luck and good luck with the rest of your thank you so much season or career yeah i appreciate it cheers buddy thanks thank you all right you next good? up we got Jim. Good, hanging in there. All right, so we're live on the YouTube stream right now. Say hi to all the YouTubers out there. Hey, what up, what up? What's up, family? So we got James right here. He just won that 800. Um, so you ran, what was it, 149 low? I have no clue what it was. Yeah, but how, how, talk about it. It doesn't matter what it was. It matters that you're racing again, you know? Talk yeah, about yeah. talk about that. I'm pleased with how I executed. I want to be a little quicker. Yeah. I know I'm much better than that, but I'm pleased with how I executed. I think you have uh, something next week that will be, you know, you're looking forward to, right? Very excited. I got to run the 800 at the Ed Murphy Mile next week. So excited to lower that time, get some yeah. more racing experience, get ready for the trials next year. Awesome. And I think just on, just released is Bryce Hoppel is going to be there as well. Really? I think, and if it's Saruni is going to be there, I think. So we got Saruni, nice. Hoppel, maybe we get Donovan there. We'll have you there. I love it. It'll be awesome. What are some things you need to uh, make sure that you do to run a faster time at, at Ed Murphy? I know it's always just racing, but. Uh, yeah, well, just staying super engaged, being sensitive to pace. Yeah. Not letting your body lag, allocating the energy evenly over the race. Okay. All types of things. Cool. So you're from Memphis. Yes, I am. So how awesome is that that you're going to be racing in your home? You know, you're not awesome. your home state, but your home city, man. It's so awesome. I haven't been back in Memphis to race since high school. Oh. And fun fact, the track at Christian Brothers High School is the last track I raced at in Memphis. Uh oh. I uh -oh. believe. Actually. Did you tear it up? You didn't burn it down. You're running so fast. No. Oh uh, no, no. They, they rebuilt it. They, <laughs> they rebuilt it. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, that's awesome, man. What is uh? We'll do one fun fact. I just you don't know you just said one, but one fun fact non-running related about yourself. I'm a CPA. I do taxes. Good. I might need so, this guy. So hit me up. Toad Life Business right Follow here. me on Instagram, <laughs> JC Gilreath. And JC Gilreath. Awesome, man. So follow me. I love that smile. Keep it up, man. You're lighting it up. Appreciate Thanks, you, man. man. Cheers. Yep. Thank you. See you next weekend. Thank you. All right, guys. Next up, we were going to go to some more races. We got some women 800 coming up. We got Sammy Watson. She's going to be blazing on the track. It's going to be exciting. Stay tuned, guys. Thank you.
Might be the race of the night. The fast section of the women's 800. This is going to be excellent. Coming up here in a minute. Introductions beginning here in front of an empty stadium at Lipscomb Academy. Dave Milner, the meet director, the MC as always for MCDC. MC for MCDC. Yeah, that works. Doing an excellent job setting this meet up as he always does. We've got some excellent runners who are here in the flesh in Nashville, Tennessee, under the lights, and it is a great night to run. Heat is gone. The sun is set here in Nashville. A little bit of a, a cooler breeze, starting to feel like fall a little bit, and so we could expect some really fast times right here in the women's 800-meter run. You can see the entries right there. Let's tell you about them. The last two NCAA outdoor champions at 800 meters, both of them are Texas A&M Aggies. Both of them are in this field. Let's start with Jasmine Frey, who's going to wear hip number one. 2019 800 meter champ in 201.31. That's her personal best as well, but she has run two flat 69 indoors. That was three years ago at Clemson. Dana Mecki is hip number two, a 2019 season best of 202.22. Back in 2015, she clocked in at two flat 76, a former road runner from the University of Texas, San Antonio. Hannah Seagrave, she is certainly a friend to the Music City Distance Carnival. That's because she ran her 2017 and her 2018 season bests at this meet. A career best two flat point one eight run at London last summer. A 2017 Milligan College alumna. She won four NAIA national titles and three NAIA national championship runner-ups. Sierra Brown, a Hampton alumna, wears hip number three. Or I beg your pardon, hip number four, a 158.01 personal best for her from back in July of 2018. Kayla Edwards, 2016 NCAA indoor champion at the mile, an Oklahoma State Cowboy NCAA runner-up in the 800 back in 2015. She'll wear hip number five. Hip six, the 2018 800 champ, Sammy Watson. She ran two flat 65 in Switzerland back in 2017. That was her career best then. 2019 season best a season ago of 201.7. Kenyatta Iyevable, the NC State Wolfpack record holder, a 2011 All-American season best at MCDC last year of 203.27. She'll wear hip seven. And Sophia Guriaran, Guriaran, high school sophomore from Moses Brown High School in Rhode Island, a high school sophomore. I'm going to reiterate that again. She is looking to break the U.S. all-time top 10. That's Robin Campbell in 1974, who's got the number 10 right now at 202.4. She has run 203. So, Sophia Gorioran, you see her outside wearing hip number 8. And Julia Rice wearing hip 9. She'll pace us in this 800. So, here we go. The last two NCAA outdoor champions at 800 meters and a high school sophomore looking to make history. Two of the top ten all-time high school times at the 800 have been run at MCDC. Are we going to see number three? Let's keep an eye on Gori Iran and hip number eight as Reisk is going to set this pace out, and it is going to be quick. So coming through in about 30 seconds, Sierra Brown Leading behind the pacer right now, Kayla Edwards, Jasmine Frey, 29.03 through the first 200 meters. They are moving. Sierra Brown, Kayla Edwards, Jasmine Frey, Hannah Seagrave, Sammy Watson. That is as good of a top five as you are going to find anywhere. And they are moving here early, right around 58 seconds, 58.41 for Sierra Brown, your leader, followed by Kayla Edwards and Hannah Seagrave. That's a lot of talent. That's a lot of All-American honors in your top three. Goriaran, 60.73. Reminder, we're keeping an eye on her wearing hip number eight and that red top with the black shorts. She's moving up now on the outside. She needs 202.4 to get in the U.S. top 10 all time. She is about to be a high school junior, but in the front still, it's Sierra Brown, followed by Kayla Edwards. 128.86, 30.45 on that last 200, but Edwards is going to challenge her all the way home. On the outside shoulder, 100 plus meters to go. Under the lights in Music City, USA, and a fast final 100 upcoming. It's Brown on the inside. 
It's Kayla Edwards on the outside. It's Edwards with just a half a step as they push for home. Oh, and it's going to be so close. On the inside, Sierra Brown, two flat 31 officially for Brown. A season best, of course, just two tenths off her 2019 season best. Kayla Edwards with a remarkable second place run in two flat 39. And Milligan College's own, Hannah Seagrave, she takes third in 202.35. There's the top six on your screen right there. What a run that was for the rising high school junior, Sophia Guriaran. Remember that name, 202.97. That is just five-tenths of a second away from a U.S. top ten all-time. So we're going to give ourselves a chance to take a little bit of a breath. That was a quick finish, an excellent final 100. And an excellent race there from the high schooler, from the veterans, and Sierra Brown of Hoka, 2016 Hampton alumna. She takes the win tonight at the Music City Distance Carnival. So we're going to hear from the winner, Sierra Brown. We're going to hear from a lot of these runners coming up in a moment. Billy Saveco is awaiting them as they make their way back down the track towards our broadcast location here in the final turn. Lots more running though coming up and up next at 8.50 Eastern Time, 7.50 here locally in Nashville, it is the Men's Mile. Excellent runners, Robert Domanic, Brian Barraza, Jacob Dumford, Eric Holt, Brandon Lassiter, they're all here. They'll all be on the track in 15 minutes. We'll tell you about them in 10 as you watch the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival. Next up, we have Sierra Brown in the house. That's right. Yeah. Back on track. How you doing? I'm doing well. You know, this is, this is my first race today. Absolutely. So a good rest buster. So you ran two flat 31, I think, mm -hmm. qualifies you for Eugene. I mean, I know yes. that was a, you have bigger goals than that, but yes. how feels how good does that feel to get that out of the way and just to have a good race under your belt? That feels really good. Um, like I was telling my teammates, I want to get it out the way today. Yeah. So and that's what we did. So I feel really good Check about it. Check that box. Checked it off. <laughs> Now I'm good. <laughs> That's right. So that was a close one at the end, you know? Yes. That feeling of racing. Mm -hmm. You haven't had that in a long time. No. Talk about how you felt. Um, it was different for me today because usually yeah. I don't take the lead. Yeah, you were out there the for whole the time. whole race. Yeah. So it was a little different, but you know, we do a lot of strength work and I was like, well, just see what you can do, and that's what I did. And it so. might be a good experience for when you're going through the rounds. If you yes. have to push it or something like yes. that, you, you got that today. Yes. Um, under the lights, good environment. Yep. It's a little 
warmer down here than maybe you're used to. Or where are you at? Where have you been training lately? Um, I moved to IJ's group, so okay, I'm with okay. Coach Derek now. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, what's the next style you got going? I know you always have some cool styles, cool clothes. Do you wear anything <laughs> crazy lately? Um, not right now. No? Lately, it's just been track clothes. So, the quarantine but I mean, clothes, quarantine clothes. You know, I'm gonna throw on something soon and all then right, all post right. it on my IG. Check out her IG. She has the wildest <laughs> clothes in all the land. I love. It. That's my favorite part of Sierra Brown. Yeah. Good job today, and we'll thank see you, you soon. So much. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Yep. Thank you. All right, next up we got Kayla Edwards. And I believe she ran two flat, was it 39? Yeah. So you were like this much, right? I know. Awesome, so how did that feel today? Walk us through that. Uh, tough. You yeah. Know, first real 800, but that's like a really good season opener. Yeah. For me, the first time I've ever ran two flat in an open race, I went from oh. 201 to 159. So that's a good so day then. I'm like, okay, I'm right in the middle, you know? Perfect. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a shock to the system. Yes. You know, you can do so much in practice, but it's not, anywhere near a race nope. um so i think it was good a good way to get all the nerves out because yeah <laughs> excuse me it feels like going from outdoor to indoor because you go those like six months without racing yep. and that's how long it's been and it's just like oh like how do i do this what do i do like it's just like a weird place right now yeah do you feel you know was, was this was there a little more pressure on today because you have such limited races with this with this covid going on you know is there more pressure how'd you deal with that um yeah i well i'm just thinking because there's so much so many moving parts right now and yeah. uh, things can change really quickly so I'm like I want to make the best of this race because there's a chance it could be the only race yeah. if yep. anything happens so I mean I would have liked to broken two yeah but two flats pretty dang good two flat 39 that's close <laughs> that's close um, so are you doing some new things with training yeah you want to talk about that real quick yeah we can do that okay, uh, I'm being coached by my boyfriend Chad Noel yeah we're still in Boulder Colorado and bought a house there and they're settling down there Congrats. so it's awesome like, that's awesome pretty we're pretty set in yeah but it's been really good um i'm on my own training yeah which has been fine i think it's also helped me to like learn paces more because oh, i'm yeah. like in charge of myself now and i think that's really helping me become a stronger smarter athlete absolutely and i last year i was like injured just had so many things working against me that um well i did have that pressure like i want to prove yeah to be myself again but then We've been able to work. We've done so much strength work this year, which um, I really needed after missing so much time last year. And then also to like be able to show up in the mile in 1500 yep. again, yep. working on that strength. So Perfect. I'm super excited to see what other opportunities lie ahead with the training because I think there's like a lot more to show for. And yeah, the new situation being coached by Chad has been super fun. Yeah. I like wake up and I'm like so happy. I'm like, this is totally, how it's meant to be, yeah, um, and I, I love that. It's that's really, awesome. It makes it really fun. I just saw a video with Joe Kovacs. He's the world, two-time world champion of shot put, and his yeah. wife is actually his coach. Oh wow! So I, I asked him, you know, is that is that a tough thing, or do you like it? And he goes, you know, she can actually see what I'm feeling like when I wake up in the morning. You know, your coach, whoever your other coach was or is in the past, you've had um, throughout the many great years you've had. <laughs> um, they're not seeing like, wow, she's feeling dead, or she has the sniffles because she's sick, or she has this, or this is she's limping because of that. Where, you know, Chad's gonna be able to see that, yeah. so he can make changes to your day by day basis before the day's almost even started. Yeah. So that's a very good thing. Change is always good, yes. no matter what they say. It's always good, and the best thing is, um, you know, you learn the most when you're uncomfortable. So you're probably pretty uncomfortable leaving a new group, <laughs> doing things on your own, yeah, something you've scary. never done before. <laughs> you know, being in college. When I left college, I loved having not one or two training partners, but so many guys and girls that could take us through it. And uh, just know that, you know, you're uncomfortable, but it's only gonna make you better. Right. So that's yeah, awesome. Thank you. I'm excited yeah. to see the rest. You're gonna be at Memphis yep. next? So Another Ed Murphy Classic next weekend. Yeah. It's gonna run that 800 again, and it's gonna be awesome. We'll yeah, I'm go excited. Go for sub too. Yep. All right, cheers, thank mate. You. Thank see you so much, thanks. yep. Sophie, are you ready to roll? Uh, yeah. Take your time, you need a water? Um, go ahead, you could take one. Could you pronounce your name one time for me? Guerreron. 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 Okay, we're live, I think, right now, actually, if you're ready. Okay. Sophia Guerreron. Yeah. Here she is right here. This girl's in ninth grade. And she just ran what? 202.97. One more time? 202.97. Woo! That is blazing fast. That's Thank crazy. You. That's amazing. Thank you. You know, was that the plan today? What was your race plan? Just, just to hang on, or did you um, want to hit a certain time? Yeah, I had, like, splits for my 200s and 400s. I had to hit like about 60 on the first 100, but I think I was a little slower than that. And then I'm just gonna try to bring it back in like 61, 52. Yeah. To get like the um, trial standard. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's what I was aiming for. That's amazing. And I saw Thank you make you. a strong move. You know, you're only in ninth grade. You're making these moves like you've been there and done that. <laughs> so, you know, right up, what was it, like 200 or 250 to go, you made a really strong move on the back stretch to put you around in fourth place. Um, were you just, you know, was that part of the plan to sit in a certain position at a certain time, or are you just going with, you know, what you felt? Uh, with what I felt mostly, just trying to hit the times that I was told to hit. So. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so you're racing pros, and you're, you know, talk about how yeah. cool that was. I'm sure up in the training, uh, you're seeing uh, some of the most famous yeah. and coolest runners there is. Yeah. How cool it's is that? pretty exciting, yeah. Um, I watch these girls on TV race, so it's like it's pretty cool for me to be racing against them. Well, guess what? Now the people at home are saying we're watching you race, <laughs> yeah. and they're going to race against you throughout <laughs> the next couple years. So that's yeah. awesome. What are some other goals? Are you done for the year? Uh, I think I'm going to run another race. Okay. I'm not sure which one yet. Like maybe next week in Memphis. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. At Murphy Classic, Kayla will be in that one. A couple of girls in this year yeah. will be in that one. So that'll be cool. Um, what are some things you're hoping to get better on over the years? I know it's a tough question, but. Um, just like my speed and my strength, definitely. Okay. Is there one that you need to, to that you need to worry about a little more? Are you really strong and you need to worry about speed? I mean, you're pretty good at um, both, but. Probably more strength work. Yeah. Like cross country stuff this fall, probably okay. helped me. Have you raced a mile or a two mile yet? Yeah, I raced to 1500 like two weeks ago. How'd that go? It was okay. I mean, I done like a lacrosse tournament. Oh, I forgot you. I don't remember time. interviewing you before the lacrosse. Yeah. yeah. I had a lacrosse tournament a few days before, so. My legs were kind of feeling it still, so yeah, this is like my best race, but it was close to my PR. Okay, so 202, did that feel a little different today? Was that hurting? Uh, or did you have more in the tank? What were you feeling? Probably more in the tank on like the last lap. Awesome. All right, give me one fun fact about yourself non-running related. Um, I like, I play a lot of lacrosse. Okay. And I made like the Under Armour All-American team. For what? For Ninth and tenth grade. This is a tough question. You're probably not going to like. But if you had to pick, running or lacrosse, uh, <laughs> that's tough. I don't know. I really like them both. Awesome. Yeah, I want to try and do both. Awesome. What are your goals for next next track season or the next time you guys um, go? Um, probably breaking like 202 or 2025 or something. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. you. All right. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. Thank I just like to like thank everyone for hosting this meet. And Liscom Academy, Dave Milner. Yes. Yeah, very nice awesome. of them having this. Say show. hi to everyone on YouTube. There's supposedly a bunch of people out there. <laughs> hi. Thank you so much for that. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. So next up, we're gonna have. What do we got up here? I gotta look. I gotta look what's going on next. Ooh, we got that men's mile next on the track. It's gonna be wicked hot. The On Boys are making their debut, baby. It's gonna be fast. You guys better be ready for it because it's not gonna wait for you. All right, guys. See you soon. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the 2020 World Run Draft, a worldwide event where viewers from around the world watch the top track and field teams in the world select the top running talent in the world. And joining us as always from his Draftorium, let's say hello to Shane Brendan. Thanks fellas. This is the night I've been preparing for all year. I am chock full of insight. Thanks, Shane. Before the draft kicks off, let's first get to know the eight special athletes in the running to be this year's first overall pick. And let me say, the competition is fierce. Joe Stride mechanics are a thing of beauty. There may not be a more fundamentally sound runner in the draft. Alicia is one of the best steeplechasers in the world. She's dedicated, her energy is infectious, she'll be a real asset to whatever team drafts her. Fallon, a two-time NCAA champion, is no stranger to the world of professional running, but is entering this year's draft as one of the most sought-after free agents on the market. The five-time All-American is the 2019 5K champion, was named the 2019 Big Ten Indoor Track Athlete of the Year, and holds the Big Ten record for the 3K. Carlos's kick is second to none. He's a closer, fiercely competitive, and that will provide a kick for any team. Beamish is a top 10 all-time indoor 3K NCAA runner who also happens to be the 2019 Mile National Champion. Ollie's strong, he's fast, he can do lots of distances. He's going to be able to close really well in those championship races. A nine-time NCAA champ, Oren is no stranger to success. Well, we have some really compelling storylines to watch here in the first round. That's right, Ryan. One of those big storylines this year is the addition of the Coach Ritz-led expansion team on Athletics Club. You know the OAC is looking to make a big splash at their first ever draft. On, as the viewers at home are no doubt familiar, was founded by Olivier Bernhard, a Swiss native who 10 years ago looked at a running shoe landscape devoid of any new innovation and knew he could find a better way. 
Sadly, the endless pursuit of perfection and precision demanded by his Swiss heritage drove Bernhard mad, and he disappeared into the Alps in 2015, never to be heard from again. Well, that's not quite right, Shane. But Mr. Bernhard did, in fact, seek out to find a better way 10 years ago, and the innovative Swiss engineered on cloud tech is proof of that. They cushion horizontally for an incredibly soft landing. Then they become firm for an explosive takeoff. Let's go back to the podium. With the first pick in the 2020 World Run Draft, the On Athletics Club is proud to select. Congratulations, welcome to the team. Pack your bags. I'll see you in Boulder. Thanks, Coach. Might as well just call it the 2020 On Run Draft. Next up on the track, it is the Men's Mile, brought to you by Lever. Take a look at those meet records. The Tennessee Soil record, Nate Brannon in 2014, he ran 355.65 in this meet. Before that, though, or I should say after that, in 2018, Eric Avila over there in Memphis at the Murphy Classic. He ran 355.43. Those numbers might be in jeopardy tonight here in this men's mile. 16 guys are scheduled to run, including the pacer John Lewis. He has been tasked to take this group out in 158 here in the mile. And some big names of this one. Rob Dovanik, personal best for him of 354.73. He's going to headline this field wearing hip number one. We've got Brian Barraza from Houston now representing Adidas and 10-man elite. You've got Alex Rogers of Reebok Boston Track Club, former Texas Longhorn, has a 340.14, 1,500-meter personal best, ran that last summer, and a 401-mile personal best that he ran in Austin, Texas back in 2016. Rogers, he'll wear hip number six. Mason Furlick of Nike, a personal best for him in the mile of 401.88. He ran that last year at the Music City Distance Carnival back when that was still at Vanderbilt last June. His 1,500-meter personal best, 342.28, ran that in Canada back in 2016. Furlick, obviously, former Michigan Wolverine, the 2016 NCAA steeplechase champion. We've also got another elite high schooler in this race as well. He'll be wearing hip number 13, all the way from the Sunshine State, representing Nice High School. That's Reinhardt Harrison, a personal best for him of 409.79, so a Great group of runners to help take him into his next high school season in cross country this fall down there in Florida and take a little bit off of that 409 personal best. So 15 guys scheduled to compete, plus the pacer John Lewis sending these guys out in 158 through 800 meters. Men's mile right now and... The men's 1500 coming up next, set for an 815 start here locally in Asheville. So here we go, the men's mile. Going out at 158, so looking to get in that 355 to 4 minute range, hoping to get a lot of guys under 4 minutes. The Tennessee soil record from Eric Avila out in Memphis, 355.43. That's on watch. And the beat record, 355.65. So it's going to be hard to get in between those two times. Hoping for both of them to go down here tonight. Alex Rogers, Eric Holtz, the early leaders following the pacer John Lewis. They're followed by a big pack. Totally single file here under the lights at Lipscomb Academy. So if you're new to the Music City Distance Carnival, obviously this is a different look than what you've typically seen at MCDC. Typically held the first Saturday in June at Vanderbilt University on a Friday and Saturday. Obviously with the COVID-19 pandemic, things get pushed back, adjustments are made. So here we are at Lipscomb Academy, just not too far down the road, maybe a 10-minute drive from that track downtown in Nashville at Vanderbilt. Less races, but the same amount of quality in all of these races for sure that we've typically seen at MCDC.
So Holt, Barraza, Menon, all in front. Right now through about 600 meters, so just over a K to go here in the men's mile. Just one section here. And lots of speed out in front early. Alex Rogers still leading right now, wearing hip number six, the former Texas Longhorn. They were right at 60.86, though, on that opening lap. Eric Holtz in there in second as well. I believe that's a hip number nine. Pacer's going to step off. He's done his job taking him right through at 158 through 800. So with two laps to go, two flat 69 for Eric Holtz. 201 right there for Barraza, but it is all bunched up right in the middle with Rogers wearing hip number six from Reebok Boston Track Club continuing to lead. So lots of racing left. And we are still awfully bunched up. Got Periata in there as well. Dumford. Lots of fast runners there in the middle. Now way on the outside. That's going to be Brian Barraza of Adidas. He's going to take this thing at the bell right around 3.03. 301.84, 60.84 right there for Barraza, who leads, followed by Holt. Thank you. One and two right now as we head to the final 400 meters. Barraza looking really strong right now, waited to make his move. But he's going to get really pushed hard here. Tune of it in there as well. Jacob Dumford on the outside. Still anybody's race with 200 meters to go, kicking for home under the lights here in Nashville. And it is too close to call right now. Totally stretched out into the final 100 meters. Ton of eight followed by Dumford. Ton of eight on the outside. Kieran, ton of eight to the line. Sub four. 357.89, 55.66, the final quarter mile. A new personal best for the Harvard man who takes the win. What a final 400 that was. The lead changes three or four times in the final quarter mile. Casey Nevelbarn is going to get second. A new personal best for him as well. 358.08. Brian Barraza, he gets under four minutes as well. 359.09. Lots of guys getting under four minutes. Five of them to be exact. Mason Furlick fourth in 359.45. Jacob Dunford rounding out the top five in 359.61. What a finish! And our one section of the men's mile, Billy Saveco, is going to get some post-race thoughts from Kieran Tunnevate coming up in a moment. But there you go, a world lead for Kieran Tunnevate, 357.87. He's your winner in the Lever men's mile run here at the Music City Distance Carnival. Lots more coming up. Stay tuned for post-race thoughts. Always love going to the Toad for some post-race conversations. He'll have... All the thoughts from Kieran Tunnevate and other runners in that section. We'll throw it down to Billy here coming up in just a moment. Stay tuned. Injured? Rehabbing? You need to run more quality miles? Lever Running was built to bring the incredible training benefits of body weight support to the masses. Don't get left behind by your competition and start running more quality, healthier miles today. Check out Lever on Instagram and see what lighter miles can do for you.
All right, sweet. <laughs> Billy Saveco, we're back with some interviews here. Reinhard Harrison, who are you? What are you doing? Uh, I don't know. I'm just a sophomore from Florida. I'm 16. And I like 16? And uh, what did you just run? Uh, 401.34. Oh, my gosh. It was a nine-second PR? Uh, yes, eight second. Eight I second. Four nine. That's amazing. A couple weeks ago. So talk about that. I mean, I don't know. I just knew how to stay with the group, basically, and like third, uh, fourth lap, I just kind of had a. I got a good kick sometimes, so I went for it. So I take your training, Colorado. No, I'm no, not training Florida? in Colorado. Yeah, Florida. So I'm coached by Tom Schwartz. Okay. He just sends me my workouts. And I just stuff. saw your Tin Man out yeah. there, so I was wondering if that was I awesome. I like to represent. Awesome. So uh, what was the plan coming into today? <sighs> I wanted to run under 4, 3.28, because I think that's what Chez had as like the uh, sophomore national record. Okay. So I wanted to go for that, and maybe if I got lucky enough, go under 4, but like I'm super happy still. So what, still have time. Walk me through that race. Was like was that pace feeling easy? Was that hard? I when mean, did you get tired? I was tired going in the third lap, but I saw that clock, and I was like, holy smokes. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. So kind of just went. Awesome, awesome. What do you think you have left in the tank? Uh, I don't know. I just ran a 4-1, so I'm, I think I could get under 4 when I'm 16, so... That's what I want to do. Amazing. What? Uh, do you have any other races left or anything? Or uh, I know it's a tough I, time. I but just got like a 5K next week. It's like my first school, but I'm probably going to try to find another mile if I can. Okay. What's, what is the 5K? What are you looking for for that? Uh, probably just like Now that you know one. you just ran a 401. Yeah. I don't I don't really know, to be honest. I'm kind of just going to get winged like I did today. Like I didn't really have a certain goal. I kind of just went out. That's what, I, that's what I do best, kind of. Just don't think about the race. It's just a race. My favorite quote is don't think, have fun, man. So yeah, man. maybe that's all you got to do. Yeah. That's amazing, man. 40134, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So one fun fact about yourself, be not running related. Uh, I guess I like to go surf. Surf. Friends, yeah. The flow, bro. Yeah. The flow, bro. All right, man. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Cheers, brother. Sophomore class record by two full seconds. S Edward Cesarek. I, I'm always butcher this guy's names at the armory. Kieran Funky Dave. It's live right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Kieran's right here with us. He just won that mile. Yeah. And that's also a tie record, right? Yeah. Talk yeah. about how cool that is to, you know, do that and represent. It's it's super cool. Like uh it was also really cool seeing the flag. Yeah. The tie flag is all the flags of every country. Yep. So that's that's it's even on cool. your bib, that's really cool, man. Yeah. On your bib though, on your bib that they gave you? Oh yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, that, that is awesome. I don't like you don't see many like Thai runners or no any like Southeast Asian <laughs> yeah runners really in this area in the United States. So yeah, it's really it's really cool to represent Thailand and then yep uh, yeah. So I saw you run at the Armory a couple times. Uh -huh. You killed it there. You know, with all that was been happening with running and all the, that scary stuff that happened way yeah. earlier that affected some seasons. You know, talk about how nice it is to come back here and run under the lights here, fast time. It's so nice. Like I, yeah, I was. Like when everything was canceled, I was like, all right, like, I guess I can just like take some time off and train. Yeah. But like around mid July, I was like, I kind of really want to race. Like, yeah. I've been putting all this work in, and then um, I had no idea where uh -huh. to race, like who's having races. And then uh, uh, Dave Milner showed up, and uh, oh, yeah, I'm glad he could put on like a safe meet. So, yeah, no, it's cool. I, I feel lucky that this happened. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. It's, it's a tough yeah. time for everyone, but we, we made it happen. It wasn't easy. Yeah. But Dave Milner did a great job, and everyone else yeah. had helped him through this whole process. Uh, yeah. So uh, what's next for you, and what, what are some things you're going to do? So uh, I guess, like, next is decide whether I want to use my next year of eligibility. Yeah. But ideally, get in with a, a professional team and uh -huh. just start gearing up for the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, it's an uncertain with what's going on with the NCAA. I saw Cross yeah. was just canceled. I don't know if you had eligibility yeah. in that. Left just and track anyway. Okay, so just track anyways. Um, yeah, I was going to hopefully get with the team this fall and okay. start building up anyway. Yeah. Okay, sounds like a secret we won't, we won't ask you about, but I hope that you can get a good with a good club or something like that. Um, yeah. Anything else you have to say? We're, this is all our yeah. YouTube followers <laughs> right now. They're all looking on there. So there's Not really. Just stream. like, yeah, thank, thanks to Dave Miller for putting this on. It was yeah, man. a really cool experience. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for kicking butt out there, man. <laughs> all <laughs> thank right. You. Thank you so much. Cheers. Harvard grad, now Thai record holder, amazing. We have one other guy we're going to talk to here real quick, though. Casey, Casey and the bouncy boy. He's going to jump on the stream. He's giving some high fives right now. Well, elbow bumps, I guess, is what we call them, to the other runners that are entering the track right now for the men's 1500. That's up next. Jump in here, brother. So 
I did. I, I didn't do pre-meet with these guys, but this is live on YouTube. So say hi to everyone out there. Hello, YouTube. Mom, Dad, Toads. How you I doing? Hope, I hope you're watching. <laughs> so, you know, talk about your race, man. Uh, it was good. I mean, it's kind of hard when you got like a one race season, but I'm yeah. so grateful yeah. for the opportunity to race. Like, I'm so glad this was able to go on. We were able to get this done and be smart about it. And yeah. I'm very grateful. And I think 357, I'm not sure, but like, yeah. I was hoping maybe a little faster, but you can't be too greedy. And honestly, the pace felt like we were like racing. You know? Yeah, it yeah. didn't feel too hot. No. But I was trying to make a move for the win. I if think you win the race, you ran the fastest that day. No, and that's all you can do is win. Yeah. You can't get any better than winning. So obviously so, you want to PR sorry. and crush every race, but uh -huh. I was pretty good, man. I was pretty good. So uh -huh. I noticed you had some special shoes on. You want to uh, tell the story behind it? Uh, what, what do you call them? I call them Bouncy Boys. The Bouncy Boys. Bouncy right? Boys. They're the, the Nike Air Zooms yeah. I got, got from a friend. And yeah. I'm very grateful for it. But uh, so did, Was that the secret today? I, my legs are fresh, you know? Yeah. Or at least it felt fresh. I was coming in like, good energy return. I mean, I'm not sponsored by Nike, but I'll shut them out right now. <laughs> that's right. Legs are feeling good. Chris Chavez, legs that's awesome. Good. So, uh, you know, what, what's your plans for the rest and what's going on and when will we see you again? Uh, it's kind of all penciled in right now. Yeah. Like, uh, I saw you're, you're with Farah. Yeah. So yeah. are you training with him now? Or are you back in Tallahassee? I'm back in here? Tallahassee. We did two months together in Flag. Okay, okay. So great, think. great training, staying in Flag, got some real good fitness in, got yeah. some great runs, got some good mileage. I just try to come out here and prove what a, you know, you work your ass off long enough, hopefully you get a PR out of it. Yeah, man, yeah. So, yeah, now I'm back in Tallahassee and just looking for the next race I can jump in. Awesome, man. Okay, so give me some fun facts. Uh, what, let's see, what's your favorite cereal? I don't eat cereal at all. What? That's no a cereal. fun fact. How do you not eat cereal? That's my favorite thing. I don't know. I have tons and tons of food allergies, so okay. I can have like well, eggs, probably nuts, how. melons. That's probably how. I couldn't have milk as a kid, so okay. No so dry cereal. I grew up on marshmallows and hot dogs. Like really? <laughs> not have a, I mean, I have a much better diet now, but <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't have a lot of food. <laughs> oh wow, that's crazy. So what's uh, your favorite thing to do besides running? Uh, cycling kind of does that count as a similar uh, vein? It's all right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I used to race bikes. Used to race mountain bikes, and okay. I still do a lot on the road bike. Would so you that's ever? Kind of my secret. Would you ever try like a try? I don't swim very well. I swim like a rock. That's yeah. from my dad back at home. He, he's not a very good swimmer, so I think I inherited that from him. But uh, yeah, uh, apart from that, I play guitar. Okay. I'm playing guitar longer than I'm running, but I'm not, not as good at it. Electric or acoustic? <laughs> Both. Uh, probably more electric than acoustic. I love the 12 string. I know that's different, strings but the are sound of that is beautiful. Great to play, hard to tune. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, what's your favorite song to yam out? Oh, I don't even know. I really like kind of like picking a key and just figuring out as I go, you know? Get like key V, start doing some C-sharp minors, and just whatever I'm feeling, let it take me, you know? Perfect, man. All right, well, hey, Casey, thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Nice to see you again. I guess thank we can you. do one Elbow. of these bad boys. Elbows? Appreciate it. Yeah, thank right, you thank guys you. very much. Next up on the track, we have the men's 1500. It's going to be wicked fast. I'm excited for it. Are you all excited for it? You better be. All right, thank you guys. We'll see you soon.
So here we are with the new on-running head coach. Uh, you know, talk about what that means to be a part of this this program and this team. Yeah, we're super excited. We, uh, you know, launched the uh, OAC, the On Athletics Club, uh, this week, and so we've kind of been lurking in the shadows, trying to uh, keep it, you know, keep everybody together, get everything going. But we were really excited to finally have the launch. Uh, it's been about a good uh, six weeks. We've had everybody together in town and a few people we've been working with a little bit before that, but it's it's fun, man, and we're excited to have a have a really good young team that's uh, ready to come out here and do some great stuff. So I heard about this about a month or two ago. I know you probably heard about it long before that. You know, like that was a long wait and everyone was wondering why everyone's moving the boulder and everything, you know. How cool does that feel that you're finally getting to announce it and you're going to have your first official race this weekend? Yeah, coming to Boulder, uh, you know, it's hard to keep a secret. It's, you know, there's a lot of good runners in Boulder. I mean, we got a lot of teams there. Um, the Bossards, uh, Tin Man, all these guys are there. And so um, there's just a lot of even un unaffiliated runners there. So, uh, but I think everybody was, uh, you know, respectful of that and we tried to just get the team together. And so, uh, but, you know, now we're there and uh, we can finally come on and just, you know, be, uh, be excited to have this first race. We we uh, tried to get some stuff on the schedule earlier, but you know, with the COVID situation, we just everything's fluid. I think it's yep. fluid for everybody, and so uh, that's why we're really excited for uh, Music City this weekend. You know, being able to come here, bring the team in. They've had great training, and you know, it was a little bit of an issue for me to try to kind of piece together people in different phases of fitness. But I think that we got six people in the 1500s here that. We're really excited to see see what they can do. Some people very very fit, and I mean we wouldn't be bringing people here, I don't think, if they weren't in good shape. And so I think uh, we'll have a have a good showing in both the men's and women's 1500s. Perfect. Um, what I was going to ask was, you know, you guys came on to the scene really quick, as in I didn't know what was happening, and then all of a sudden On's a shoe brand, On's funding all the money. Now they have a track club, you know. What did that mean, and was there a certain mission behind, you know, the track club? Is there a certain kind of thing you're trying to bring out and tell about the sport? Yeah, when On uh, when on Running uh, kind of, they've, they've, they've sponsored Zap and Mammoth uh, Track Club, you know, for the last couple of years, but I think really trying to get into the uh, performance world, you know, track and field is maybe, we're just coming out with spikes now, but we've really invested, I think, in uh, young kids that we think are going to come out, have a good shot over the next four years to develop really well. Hopefully, um, hopefully, you know, we're a very international brand too. And so we, we picked athletes who, you know, created that diverse uh, international team as well. And so we wanted people who could, you know, bridge the gap from the NCAAs, but help each other along the way to, and, you know, in similar events, but maybe sometimes not always overlapping. And so, uh, when we put together the, the people that we wanted on the team. I mean, it started with Joe Klecker, uh, and we picked, we went Ali and Carlos very quickly, and those three were all good friends. Uh, when we brought Jordy Beamish on, um, it was a natural fit, really. You know, we have a, a really strong men's middle distance team, and then when I brought my two women, Leah and Emily, with me, I, I, I know that they're ready to, to step out, have big years, and... Uh, and so they were integral, I think, in getting Alicia Monson on the team, and um, she was a big sign for us because we, I, I think she's she has the potential to be one of the next really great, um, you know, American runners. We just she's twenty, she just turned twenty-two. She's so young, so uh, so we we've got some time, you know, and and then Alicia Konechek, uh I mean, she knows she knows the world stage. She was you know in Doha last year at the World Championships, and she was already an on athlete. So um, so we were thrilled to have her, and I think. Those eight runners, we've we've put together a really strong team that is young, but there's some experience as well, and so I think they're gonna they're gonna have a good spread across the across the board, and uh, we've already had a good team atmosphere, which is important too. Yeah, no, you do have. A Up next, the on-running men's 1500 meter run, as you hear from Dathan Ritzenheim, the coach, the architect behind that on-running athletics club. Big race here for a lot of pretty fast dudes. Meet record 338.48 from Rob Napolitano a, a year ago. Tennessee soil record, that one goes way back to the 80s. That was before distance carnival days. 334.92 from Steve Scott in 1982. Let's see if maybe that's in jeopardy today. 
Going to be tough in this humidity here in Nashville, Tennessee. Abe Alvarado will wear hip number one from Atlanta Track Club. He's got a 341, 1,500 personal best that he ran at Stanford in March of 2018. 146, 800 personal best as well. So look out for his kick at the end of this one. Willie Fink wears hip number two, a 341, 31 personal best that he set in Charlotte on June 15th of the 2018 outdoor season. Sam Prankle, he's been on the track this summer. Ran a 338 in Oregon on July 31st. An Oregon alumnus who was a 30 or 336 personal best that he ran in California in 2018. Oliver Hoare, Carlos Villarreal, Dylan Maggard, Morgan McDonald, the four-time NCAA champion. He's in this field wearing hip number seven, the Badger, a six-time Big Ten champ, looking to break his personal best of 339.14 that he ran back home in Australia in January of 2018. Got Graham Crawford, Nick Willis, Joe Klecker, one of the headline signings of the On Athletics Club. Colorado Buffalo with a 341-69 personal best. You can find him wearing hip number 10 here in this 15. Trip Hurt, Nick Harris, and Kwame Prince doing the pacing tonight in a loaded field with some members of the On Athletics Club. You've got an NCAA champion in there in Morgan McDonald. You've got a lot of talent on the track here under the lights at Lipscomb Academy. A social distanced 1500. See who can socially distance themselves from the pack here. If it's anything like the mile, we're in for a treat. That was a fun one a minute ago. Alvarado from Atlanta. Willie Fink from District. Oliver Hoare, Colors Villarreal, Morgan McDonald. Just so many big names. And lots more to come tonight. So here we go, the men's 1500. Alvarado, Fink, Brinkle, Hoare, Villarreal, Maggard, McDonald, Crawford, Willis, Klecker, Hurt, Harris, paced by Prince. 1500 meters for a Music City Distance Carnival title under the lights at Lipscomb Academy in Nashville, Tennessee. Prince, who was second in the 800 earlier this evening, a Nashville native who attended Tennessee State University, he is going to take it out. And he's going to take it out at a quick pace. Oliver Hoare followed by Abe Alvarado in the front. Morgan McDonald, the Badger, inside on the rail. All bunched up as they hit 300 meters. About 42-9 right there for your leader, Kwame Prince, the pacer in this field. Oliver Hoare of On Athletics Club. The 2018 NCAA champion at 1,500 meters, looking to break a career best of 337.2. And he ran that in the 2019 outdoor season out in California. 57-16 now officially for him through 300. And there it is through 400. 57-16 followed by Alvarado, McDonald, Villarreal, and Hurt. Hurt trying to move up on this field. Kwame Prince continuing to set the pace. It is an awfully quick one. Hoare, Alvarado, Fink, Villarreal. The debut of the On Athletics Club. So far, so good for these guys. Joe Klecker in there as well, wearing hip number 10. Nobody's out of this thing yet. Kwame Prince is going to drop off in a moment with two laps to go. They are moving in the low 140s range. And they'll hit 800 here in a moment. So there we go. 155.34, a 58.19 right there. And the meet record could possibly be in jeopardy here, the 1500. Hoare, Alvarado, Fink, Prankle, and McDonald. Lots and lots of All-American honors 
in that group. Hoare starting to break away from the field. Could this be the first gold medal for the On Athletics Club? Distancing himself from Alvarado, from Fink, from Prankle. They are totally single file. And this time is going to be awfully quick. Through 1,200 with just 300 to go. A couple of straightaways and a turn at 1,500. The meet record again, 338.48 last year from Rob Napolitano of Hoka. Could that go down tonight on this surface at Lipscomb Academy? Hoare continuing to look strong. Followed by Prakel in second. Trip Hurt in third. It is the Oliver Hoare Show. Into the final straightaway on Athletics Club. That's the name of the team, and you're going to be hearing a lot of it starting tonight and moving forward. Hoare, your winner at MCDC, under 335. That is a new meet record, and it's not even close. 334.63, the winning time for Oliver Hoare. That is a Tennessee soil record. Folks, you just witnessed the fastest 1,500 ever in the volunteer state. Steve Scott, step aside. It's been since 1982 that he's held the Tennessee soil record. That's all gone in 2020. Take a look on your screen, 334.63, followed by Sam Prakel, 336. Trip Hurt with an excellent finish as well in 336. You get six guys at 337 or better with Morgan McDonald and Joe Klecker, both setting personal bests as well. Not bad at all. A meat record, a Tennessee soil record. One of the best runs we've seen in the history of the Music City Distance Carnival. Oliver Hoare, what a night and what a race. We're going to be hearing from him in a couple of minutes. So we do have a second heat of the men's 1500. That's coming up in a moment. Second heat, you've got... A lot of guys in that 340 to 345 range. That's going to be led by Cameron Griffith, the Arkansas Razorback running for Adidas. He'll headline the second heat that's making their way onto the track. If you're just now joining us, it's been an excellent meet so far. The women's 800, Sierra Brown, she took that one by eight hundredths of a second ahead of Kayla Edwards in two flat 31. Edwards, two flat 39. Hannah Seagrave of Milligan, 202.35 to round out the top three. The men's 800 was awfully quick as well. Michael Saruni, the collegiate record holder, 146.13 for him, followed by the local guy, Kwamel Prince, who ran 146.42 for second place. And in the men's mile, may have finished in seventh, but Maybe the headline of the night so far, Reinhardt Harrison. You heard from him a minute ago with our resident Toad, our resident sideline guy, Billy Saveco. Harrison, 401-34. And he's going to have another high school season to try to get sub four. And what a race it was for him in that top ten with the pros. Kieran Tunivate, though, he takes the world lead, takes a personal best in 357.87. The Harvard man takes the win in the men's mile. And then Oliver Hoare, you saw it right there, breaking a long, long time Tennessee soil record. 334.63, breaking Steve Scott's record from all the way in 1982. So the guys in Section 2 are going to make their way over to the starting line for the 1,500-meter run. 13 men scheduled to race, including Ido Sibadin, the Nigerian record holder in the 800-meter run. He is going to pace this second section. Isaac Updike will wear hip number one, a 344-24 personal best for him. 
Cameron Griffith, the Arkansas Razorback, running for 10-man elite and wearing the Adidas singlet. The Aussie has a 339.86 personal best, the only guy to get sub-340 coming into this heat. And his personal best, he ran that last April in 2019, 339.86 a season ago. Got Ryan Adams wearing hip three, All-American from Furman University, the Paladin. Ian Ritchie wears hip four, Avery Bartlett, Kendall Muhammad, Ricky Romero. This is a good group. And what has become a premier meet, not only in the state of Tennessee now, but in the United States and post-pandemic, it is really good to watch track and field again. Once again, I'm Will Bowling. Glad to be with you here tonight. So glad you decided to join us here on YouTube Live for full coverage from the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival. We are masked up. We are socially distanced. And a big credit to Dave Milner, the meet director, the MC, the master of ceremonies, so to speak, every year of the Music City Distance Carnival. Credit to him for putting on an excellent event tonight. I know certainly people in the world of track and field are very thankful to be watching the sport again, thankful to be watching any sports again, but especially this one around the track here at Lipscomb Academy. So you got 13 guys coming up in a moment. Hope you'll stick around to hear Oliver Hoare's interview with Billy Saveco. Certainly want to thank Billy for being with us, doing a great job talking to these runners and getting their initial reaction after a busy night. Still to come tonight, we've got the on-running women's 1500 scheduled for a 835 start here in Nashville, Tennessee, in the central time zone. After that, you've got a 9 o'clock start for the Ponce Law men's 5,000-meter run. Good group scheduled to race there. Ben Flanagan, Reed Fisher, Joe Stillen, Zach Panning. Lots of good runners in that one. Then the women's 5K is going to be after that, set for a 9.30 start. Good group there as well. Then the high school races will finish us off. The girls, 3,200 at 10.30 will be the last race of the night. 10.15. Got a lot of dudes that are looking to break nine in the high school boys. 32. But right now on the track, it's section number two. It's the 1500 meter run. And it's 13 guys, including the pacer, Edos Ibedin, who's going to take this thing out quick. So here we go for the second and final section of the men's 1500. Edos Ibedin back on the track after a nice run earlier tonight in the men's 800. Looking for hip number two of Cameron Griffith, the Arkansas Razorback running for 10-man elite. Comes in with a personal best of 339.86. So you've got Isaac Updike, Cameron Griffith, and Jake Edwards. One, two, and three right now behind Ido Zibedin setting the pace. Coming up on deck, you can see him warming up there, the women's 1500. You got the boss running group set to take the track in a moment, featuring Emma Coburn and Corey McGee. Coburn, of course, the defending champion at 1,500 meters at the Music City Distance Carnival. Coming up on a quarter mile here, right around 60 seconds. Wait for the official split, and there it is, 59-34. It's Isaac Updike of Hoka, New Jersey, New York Track Club, followed by Jake Edwards and Ryan Adams through a quarter. So these guys will lock in here, focusing on the middle portion of this race. You can see some fans joining us from outside the track, not inside the facility here, so to speak, but taking advantage of some of the best runners in the world being right down the street from them here in Nashville, Tennessee. Jake Edwards on the outside shoulder right now of Isaac Updike as Ibedin continues to run out in front. Cameron Griffith, though, still in a good spot there. On the inside, a reminder again that he's the only guy in this field to have broken 340 in his career. 
His personal best of 339.86 came April 2019. So he's looking to improve on that. So is everybody else in this field. Just one guy has run in 2020. That's Ian Ritchie, who ran 347 earlier this season. Updike through 800, 159.71. That's a 60.38 right there to continue to lead, followed by Edwards, Adams, Muhammad, Bartlett, right here through 800. Pack starting to break up a little bit, stretching out, following the leader, Isaac Updike, who's continued to set the pace, running away from this field from the start. Ryan Adams now pushing on the outside. The Furman Paladin is going to sit on the outside shoulder of Jake Edwards. Kendall Muhammad, the Kentucky Wildcat, on the inside. Lots of runners and a bell. Who's going to finish this thing off in the Final Four? An elite 1,500 on deck for the women, but a really good finish right here. Griffith now starting to run away from the field. Ryan Adams on his outside. It's Arkansas. It's Furman. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. These guys already moving, and now they hit 200 to go. And here goes Ryan Adams. Adams, Griffith, Updike, one, two, and three. Updike has done most of the work to lead this thing. And now you start to see the legs churn a little bit quicker. The arms pumping just a little bit higher in the Tennessee humidity on a Saturday night. Who wants it more in the final 100? It's Griffith on the outside and Ryan Adams on the inside as they kick for home. To the line they go. And on the outside, Cameron Griffith may have gotten it. We'll wait. And there it is, 340-28. Cameron Griffith, your winner out of the second section, just off his personal best, but an excellent run for him to take the win in section two. Ryan Adams with an excellent finish, 41-58, that final 300. He takes second by just two-tenths of a second behind Griffith. 340.47. Isaac Updike rounds out the top three in 341.59. So a couple of personal bests in that top five. Isaac Updike with a new career high of 341.59. That's a new best for him. And Kendall Mohamed, 343.9. He takes fifth and will leave Nashville with a new career best. So now we're going to talk to the man who is the new Tennessee soil record holder, Billy Savetko, standing by with... Oliver Hoare of On Athletics Club. He is your winner in 343. I beg your pardon, 334. And a new Tennessee soil record here tonight at Nashville. If they are, you know, just going to make it look like it's a casual. That's right. Yeah. All right. Next up we have Ollie Orr for the, for the um, he's going to sing his favorite song for you. No. Testing, one, two, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you just run 334.6 or yeah, something? Yeah, no, I did. Incredible. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it, man. I mean, coming from Colorado, you ran, what was that, 356? Yeah, 356 in Colorado. So. At altitude, so you were expecting a fast time. Yeah, hoping for a fast time and, like, having the paces here and all the uh, talent to rock up with it. It was exciting, and so hopefully, you know, it was going to come together and definitely, you know, worked from the front and pushed out a great time, so I'm, I'm stoked. I mean, that was amazing. Was that your splits you wanted to go through? Did you hit them spot on? or? Yeah, no, um, spot on. I think if we went out a little quicker, it would have been even even better, but yeah. just very consistent, so it, it shows that my strength's there, Absolutely. which is exciting with my speed, and yeah, just happy to come away with a good time and, a, and an Olympic standard. That's right. It shows the new training's happening. Yeah, yeah, new training's working. working, on's working, and uh, Rittenheim's working, so yeah, he's happy with that, so it's good to see a... Uh, you know, marathon guy coming in, t teaching a 1500 meter guy to run, so yeah, yeah. making it interesting. <laughs> Absolutely, it's definitely a different speed for him, for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so talk about, you know, the on, man, OAC. Yeah. When, how long did you, I know you guys were keeping this secret for a long time, but. It was a worst kept secret in running, to be honest. I think <laughs> everyone, everyone knew. <laughs> everyone knew we're running around uh, Boulder, like, I moved into Boulder from Madison, Wisconsin, and they're like, what are you doing here? It's like, oh, I'm just chilling. Like, I just couldn't explain where I was, and then eventually, with the group getting released and the excitement behind it, we were able to, like, kind of, be more open with our training and, and enjoy being out in Boulder. And so far, it's been fantastic. Great, great group of people, um, great training mates, great coach, and uh, overall, the brand has been fantastic. So I'm really enjoying the experience so far. Awesome. What's next? What's next? So next is LA. Um, okay. I might be running my first ever outdoor 5K. So 
with my boy Joe Klecker, so he'll he'll uh -oh. give me he'll he'll drag me along that race in LA, and hopefully you know another awesome. good race. Yeah. Yeah. What are you what are your expectations with that now, knowing that you've run this fast now? Um, I mean, if I can run under 1330, that'd be great. That's Woo! probably a modest goal, and then see how far we can get down. But uh, Joe and coach think, seem to think I can run well, so. I'm just excited to be able to run my first Not just here. Joe and Coach. I think a lot of people are expected <laughs> and think you can kill it. Hey, Morgan, what's up, brother? Hey, gang. <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, anything else? Uh, what else? One, one fun fact about yourself, non-running related. Um, one fun fact, I eat way too much. I ate, like, three pizzas last night, and then what? I just threw it up all over there. So, like, <laughs> the issue with everyone is that, like, if you're around me and there's food on the plate, I will eat it. It's gone. It's gone. Flavor, so what's your topping? My first topic thing, I like spicy stuff. Okay. Pepperoni, I love. I li actually really like um, the, the fat, fat pieces, like the big, thick ones. Thick crust. Yeah. All right, well, there's the gun, so we're done. Thank you very much, man. Thank Appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks Cheers. for your time. Yep. Austin, can you get a picture of us real quick? I'm going to get a picture with Ollie. Nine ninety one. That was a sixty four point nine. So these women get a little bit quicker on the second lap compared to the first one. Lauren Johnson. She moved up to the field in fourth. Or I beg your pardon, in third, sixty four point seven. So she had one of the quicker laps right there as well. But now McGee and Coburn starting to break away here. The third time they've raced this summer, Coburn won the first one. McGee won the second race. Who's going to get the rubber match? They're going to take the bell here in a moment. Coburn followed by McGee, just like the 2019 Music City Distance Carnival. They're breaking away from this group. This is going to be a close finish. Leah Folland moving up in that group as well, leading that chase pack behind the top three, but it is all Coburn and McGee, as it was last summer in Nashville and in Memphis. Side by side they come. Under 300 meters remaining now. McGee now starting to push a little bit. Leading Coburn on the outside. Corey McGee looking to make it two out of three against her friend and partner this summer. 200 meters to go. The former Florida Gator, the Colorado Buffalo. Coburn and McGee, the teammates. Who wants it more the final 100? The time is going to be good in the low fours. How low can they get? McGee looking just a step stronger over the final lap. She is going to take it.
by the slimmest of margins, 4.03 for Corey McGee, your winner in the 15. 4.03.64, that a new meet record. Two years in a row that McGee and Coburn produce a new best at the Music City Distance Carnival. That standard just got two seconds higher. But still, it's a personal best for Emma Coburn as well. 4.03.82 for her in second. Emily Lapari with an excellent final lap to round out the top three. But it's all McGee, a meet record in 4.03.64. We've had a lot of great runners at MCDC, a lot of great races. That one certainly right up there with the best of them. Go back to Portland um, okay. and run in one of those uh, like track media meets again. Oh sweet! Yeah, how uh, many they, more they, they have? They've had like just, I, I don't know how many more. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we are live. Sam Prackle. Prackle. Right? Prackle. <laughs> I, I think he just corrected me. Sam Prackle. He got. Uh, he just ran 336.6, which is a PR. Little PR, but a PR is a PR. You know, talk about tonight. And I saw you coming on really hard at the end there. You had something left in the tank, huh? Yeah, I ran a little more conservatively tonight. Um, as I guess compared to my previous 1500 and, yeah. and was kind of just moving wide throughout the entire race. Um, yeah, I was farther back early on, but um, you know, thought I could maybe close a little, a little harder the last 300 and uh, Ollie just kept getting away and away. But he was just, out yeah, hard, man. He was out hard, yeah. Yeah, but uh, you, you said you closed in what your last 200 was what? I think 27, 28, so had some a little bit left. That's good to know yeah. that you have that there. You know, knowing yeah. that, you know, how would you approach your next race? I know you're just racing when you're racing. Yeah, I think maybe. just continue to, uh, uh, race for place, you know, yeah. race for the win, just do what do what's best for me, and the time will come, so, you know, I'll try not to focus too much on the time right now and, and just having fun out there. Cool. That's Hey, that's always <laughs> the name of the game. You have fun, we lead to good results. Talk about uh, what, what's next for you. So I'll uh, fly back to Seattle where I'm based and um, see if I can do another one of those Portland pop-up meets with the Tracklandia guys. This has awesome. been a bunch of fun, and maybe set up another Fast 15 and, and keep keep getting a PR, so that's, that's the plan. Yeah, talk about how different it is, you know, no fans, you know, it's, it's a little weird time, but in Portland, they've been putting on meet after meet after meet, which is great. You know, it's still not the same, but talk about uh, how that has been. Yeah, it's a little different. You know, it's a process going throughout race week, getting the two tests in and um, having to, to wear a mask everywhere you go and everything. That's a little new, but I know I've, this is my like I, fourth meet this summer doing that. So I'm, I'm kind of used to the routine and um, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing it again next week. And it's low key. I kind of like the... Yeah, quiet atmosphere. Um, you got to keep it loose. I think the first couple of times it's easy to get a little more nervous just because yeah. it seems a little different. But keeping it loose helps a lot, and I think we kept it loose tonight, and it paid off. Perfect. One fun fact about yourself, non-running related. Ooh, I can ride a unicycle, so that's nice. <laughs> like we're talking like up and down hills, turns, yeah, or we're yeah. talking like just in, you know, up and through uh, the grass, the wherever you want to go. Distance <laughs> pro Not runner. bad, yeah. man. That's uh, nice. What's your fastest uni unicycle Ooh, mile? That is a good idea. We need maybe to after this. the season. I don't know if Coach Powell would approve, but. Uh, well, <laughs> maybe after the season. Yeah, after Live the season. on YouTube. Sam's going to kill it in the <laughs> unicycle mile. All right, Love man. It. Thank you so much. Yep, Congrats, thanks. bro. Congrats. Yep. Cheers. <laughs> Section 2 of the women's 1500 now under the lights at Lipscomb Academy here in Nashville, Tennessee. And the second of our two heats getting ready to run right now. Time to beat 4.03.64, the best time ever run at the Music City Distance Carnival or on Tennessee soil right there from Corey McGee in 4.03.64. An excellent time. That's two straight years now that McGee and Coburn have set the meet record here at MCDC. Heat number two coming up. We've got Danielle Aragon wearing hip one, a three-time All-American at Notre Dame, a 40903 personal best for her. She ran that back in July 2018. Josette Norris started at UNC, finished at Georgetown Hoya. She ran 41082 for her career best last June in Princeton. That's June 2019. Of course, no outdoor season so far in 2020. Tori Gerlach, a 4.14.84 personal best for her. She'll be wearing hip number three coming down from Reebok Boston Track Club. NCAA bronze medalist back in the steeplechase in 2017. 4.17.84 for her here last year. 
Ellie Hennis, Karina Gillespie, lots of talented runners even in this second section. As always, top to bottom, one of the best distance meets you're going to find here in Nashville every summer. So looking around 66 through 400, that's going to be the ask of Julia Reisk from District Track Club and Under Armour. She'll be the Pacers. 15 women outside of the Pacer competing in this one. Best personal best out of all of them belonging to the former Notre Dame Fighting Irish, Danielle Aragon at 409-03. So Josette Norris of Reebok Boston. She's going to lead this thing out behind the Pacer. Molly Sugaro in there as well. Through about 50, 51 seconds, we'll call it. Through 300 with 1,200 meters remaining. Appreciate you joining us tonight in Nashville. Certainly a new look to the Music City Distance Carnival this year. Normally held at Vanderbilt. Normally the first Saturday in June if you're new to this meet. Always a treat for us here in Nashville and an event that is quickly becoming one of the biggest distance events in the United States. Love meets like this every year as the local community kind of gets to rally around a meet like this, gets to see some of the best runners in person. And those guys are all on the rail tonight, as you see right there. Josette Norris leading right now, though, on the track, 68-15 through 400. Emily Oren, Ellie Hennis, Molly Sugro, all up there in the front. As they'll approach 800 to go here in a moment, the pace being set by Julia Reisk. So Emily Oren looking to make it a couple of heat wins for On Athletics Club, coached by Dathan Ritzenheim. Appreciate On Athletics Club's support and participation in this meet, a meet that, like I said, continues to grow even at the end of August instead of the beginning of June. So the pacer will step off. That was 109.75 there, so a touch slower on that second 400 for Emily Oren and Ellie Hins. Danielle Aragon of Hoka, New Jersey, running third. Josette Norris, Gabrielle Jennings round out that top five. So anybody's race, about a group of five or six that started to separate themselves from the rest of this field, led by Emily Oren wearing that light blue singlet of On Athletics Club. Way on the outside, you've got Danielle Aragon, who's got the fastest personal best coming into this race at 4.09. 3.09 with 400 meters to go. Who's got the final kick to take this section? Emily Oren's personal best is 4.18.16, hoping to get close to that and hopefully under it. That was a much quicker lap right there. 67.4 that time for Oren. Followed by Hennis, Aragon, Norris, and Jennings. Pretty much the whole field running 67 in the top five. And now Aragon making a kick. Aragon leading into the final straightaway. Can she get close to her PB around 4.10? Followed by Ellie Hinnes. Gabrielle Jennings on the outside. You've still got Norris in there as well. Coming to the line, Oren making a late push, but it's not going to be enough. Danielle Aragon, 4.14 and a 48-second final 300 to take section two. There's the official time, 4.14.25 from Danielle Aragon. Emily Oren with an excellent final stretch there. She takes second. Hennis in third at 4.15.14. Gabrielle Jennings, 4.15.56. Josette Norris rounding out the top five in 4.15.83. So there's the official time, a win for Hoka, New Jersey. 
in section two. A couple of outstanding 1500s here tonight under the lights at Lipscomb. Emily Horn with a PB, Gabrielle Jennings with a PB, two out of the top five coming in with new career bests. They'll leave Nashville happy tonight out of section two of the women's 15. So let's head back track side and catch up once again with our guy, Billy Sveco. All right, here we are. I think we're ready. What's up, YouTube? How you guys doing? We are here with Trip Hurt. Two and a half second almost PR yep. in that 15. Yeah. Talk about that, man. That's incredible. Oh, man, that was. Uh, I thought I was going to blow up at, at any time. I just really didn't think I was going to make it all the way. It's and not then easy. Came around the last stretch, and I was like, whoa, I think I'm going to run fast. And made it to the line. So it was solid. It's amazing. Were you expecting to have that big of a PR tonight? No. no. I, uh, I came in wanting to run that fast. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the typical runner, doubting myself a little bit. So goal was come in and just kind of shut the brain off as much as possible and try and run fast. So Perfect. I kind of feel like I did that. It came through 1,200. Really just hadn't been focusing too much on the clock. Yeah. And then just let it rip all I had. Just racing, bro. Run. That's the best. Yeah, exactly. That's just ultimately come from yeah. that. So it was so. a lot. I wanted to run a fast time, but at, in reality, it's just racing. Incredible, bro. So. Incredible. So Lever is a sponsor. It's on yes. your chest. You want to talk about why that that's... That is me. Yeah. So Lever is a bodyweight support system. Yep. So it's similar to an Alter-G, yep. um, except that we are available to the everyday consumer. So yep. We're $1,000 instead of $50,000 that Alter-G is. So it's great functionality that I use in my training and that a lot of professional runners are going are hopefully going to start using here in the future. Perfect. What's next for you? Um, Ed Murphy Memphis Mile. So I'll be, Perfect, I'll be in I'll Memphis for in a week. I think we're actually going to be hanging out at Max's house for a couple of days. So Perfect. you got to put up with me. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. Good job. Congrats. Yes. Yep. All right. And then I think, I think, yep. The Better Business Bureau of Middle Tennessee has presented Ponzi Law with their prestigious 2017 Torch Award. This is our highest recognition, and it's one that the business earns from their own performance and reputation. The judges, for the first time, have selected a law firm, and the things that I saw were exceptional. This law firm has committed themselves to a standard that the Better Business Bureau upholds. Ponzi Law. Justice for all. We're like 401, 402. Yep, I ended up running 403. Um, but this year has been fun. Just I wish it was steepling, but it's yeah. fun to, to get a few cracks at um, sea level 1500s and miles. Um, I definitely have been putting in the best work I've put in, um, you know, for that type of training. Yep. Um, and so it's just fun to to get to have a race and have competition. And yeah. uh, Corey ran great, and uh, Sierra Brown was an excellent pacer. So we're very happy to be here and very happy to uh, be given the opportunity to race. Yeah, that's awesome. So you guys you guys are training partners. Everyone knows that. But you guys get to finish one, two in that. You know, that's got to be a good feeling to see you guys, you know, week in and week out your training. But you're also seeing the results are, you know, come through. So. Yeah, um, I've actually been in Crested Butte all summer. And Corey, oh, okay, um, so maybe I'm the wrong. last, no, no, no. <laughs> last month she's been a boulder and i've been impressed with you okay. and so i've actually been training a lot by myself ah, um and so okay. it's i've missed her i've missed well, you, you um got to hang out tonight huh? we got to hang out a lot and oh <laughs> thanks good job um it's just so fun I, I really love my teammates they know how to work hard but they're also really kind and loving and funny and we just have a great time together but we also have a high standard of excellence and so to come out here and go first and second um you know, we're really proud for, for New Balance, for Team Boss, yeah. um, to take, you know, end our season of real racing with PRs is good. We'll, we'll each race ne next weekend, but... In L.A. or where is that? L.A. Okay. Yeah, and we're not doing 1500s. I'm pacing. We're pacing and maybe an 800, so... Oh, an 800. What is the prediction on that <laughs> for fun? <laughs> my PR is 209 from college, from my sophomore year of college. It's a POTS invite in, in Boulder. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think if I could run... I 202, think you'll be yeah, That'd yeah. be really good for me. Awesome. Um, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I think Corey's ready now. Do you want yeah, to one last thing is, you know, you guys are always at, I see you at MCDC, I see you guys at Ed Murphy Classic. You know, talk about how cool these, like, meets are and how cool it is that it just won't continue through all that's going on. You know, I really respect um, when domestic races uh, happen and when they're, uh, they put great fields together and they really, um, you know, put a lot of effort into making this a good race experience. We've put on our last two races, uh -huh. like our, our kind of inner squad races. And so, you know, to come to a meet and not have to work for it, you know, not have to plan anything is great to show up yep, and just stand yep. on the starting line and not have to think about anything else. 
um, it was a real treat. So I'm really okay. grateful for uh, for what was provided for yeah. tonight. Well, good luck in that eight. Oh, God. You got uh, it. You I'm got not it. sure if I'm doing it or not, but okay, uh, Corey okay. is for sure. Uh-oh. And okay. without further ado, Corey without further ado. and Mickey. Thank you so much. Exit stage left. <laughs> All right, Corey, this is live on YouTube right now, so Hi. we're getting right into it. Yeah. So we're talking a winner of that 1500, 403. Yeah. I know you guys went through that time in your mile that you just ran a week or so ago, right? Roughly? We did, yeah, I think I think around there. So you're yeah. looking to go a little faster, but it's still nice to race again, nice to get a win always. You know, talk about the today. Yeah, today I knew that Emma and I were going to work together, and we yep. had amazing pacing by Sierra Brown, Sierra which well, yep. just what she's done in the 800 and then today watching her run too flat we knew we could trust her so much and she provided us perfect pacing so really we just needed to try to be as close to her as we could be and um <laughs> i kind of let us get into no man's land uh -huh. on that first lap just because i thought we were running just a little fast which i mean it's just the nature of running that fast yep, it yep. feels fast yep. and so gave her a beat and then of course it was just up to us to try to get close to close her that, yeah. before that k was up and she was finished yeah. with her job and so it was awesome emma and i worked together that last lap and I did want to run a little faster, but I'm yeah. just so happy with running a PR. It's always, I can't complain. <laughs> How happy are you with running um, under a light and just racing, you know, at a meet? It's, it's been a weird time, but yeah. you're not doing your own meets anymore. You're racing. Um, I mean, it really felt, <laughs> when we were walking down, I said to Emma, I go, wow, this is a really big field. And then I counted it and it was 12 women. And that's <laughs> totally normal. <laughs> but yeah. it felt like it was unusually large because we've just raced each other this whole year. Yeah. And so to be with, you know, 12 women on the start line uh, felt unusual, truthfully. And um, I mean, obviously that's normal and I'm going to get used to it again. But it feels really fun to just be on the starting line, like yep. with teammates and competitors yeah. and it's always harder to like tap into that competitiveness when you're with your teammates and the women who you train with and lean on yeah so to be able to race against you know other women who train hard but like um, are from every corner of the country feels yeah. uh, it's a little bit more fun because you yeah, can no. be more competitive exactly um, so to not just be against teammates obviously makes it a little bit more of a race <laughs> yeah more more fun more yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. you said, competitive. It's actually good the sport. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are always here at Run MTDC. Uh, yeah. You guys are always at Ed Murphy Classic. Last year, I think you had your PR, and was that Ed Murphy? I think a bunch of people yeah. PR'd. Yeah. I think so, that both of them actually. What is it about the state of Tennessee that you know gets you guys going? I think it's the people. Oh I mean, gosh. You're hearing you're hearing from a Mississippian, so for yeah. Me it's like Southern. Uh, when I get here, I feel like kind of at home, uh -huh. and um, it's very hospitable and everyone's just happy and makes you feel good about yourself yeah, so awesome. I think it brings the positive energy and it's fun to race where people are friendly and happy to cheer for you absolutely yeah. absolutely uh, one fun fact about Corey McGee non-running related we're gonna mix it up one fun thing for everyone out there uh, put you on the spot uh oh carrots Emma. are my favorite food carrots yeah <laughs> really? So wait, how do you eat them? Do you just eat carrots? Or just, you chop them up? I mean, brown I don't sugar? eat like an, an overabundance, but since I was a kid, I've just always liked them. Best snack, huh? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank yeah. you so much, Corey. Yeah, Appreciate thanks. you guys. Gift you yeah. back to the track action. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>
Time for some 5Ks coming up next. Brought to you by Ponzi Law. Appreciate them. Appreciate their support of the Music City Distance Carnival. 12 and a half laps for these gentlemen. 30 of them to be exact. And some good ones in there. Nick Willis scheduled to compete wearing hip number 29. So he'll start way there on the outside. Ben Flanagan will wear hip number one. NCAA 10K champ in 2018 for the Michigan Wolverines. Ran 13.31 indoors back in February at Boston. And has a 14.06 outdoor personal best in May of 2016. All right, so a little bit of a, uh, a mix-up here. We're going to have Dathan Ritzenheim join us, but uh, some, some technical difficulties. Not going to be able to, to get him on tonight, but that's all right. He sends his best, and uh, happy to have him here, happy to have the support of Dathan Ritzenheim and the On Running Group here tonight. They're well represented. Oliver Hoare with a big run in that 1500, new Tennessee soil record if you missed it. It's right here on our stream from earlier this evening. Appreciate him, appreciate their support of the entire night. So, like I was saying before, Ben Flanagan, the 10K champ for Michigan back in 2018, ran 13.31 indoors in 5K. So, he certainly was in good shape for an outdoor season in 2019 that was unfortunately cut well short. He gets a chance again to get close to that indoor personal best. His outdoor personal best is 14.06. He ran that back in May of 2018 and 16. Reed Fisher wears hip number two, ran a personal best in California back in 2019. He's also a world championship qualifier in the half marathon. He ran that 13-43-46 last year. He was the top American as well at the Houston half marathon in 2019. Fisher representing Adidas and 10-man elite. Joe Stillen will wear hip number three, representing that on a running group, coached by the one and only Dathan Ritzenheim. Still in an All-American for Princeton. He ran 13.32 for his personal best five years ago back in August 2015. Looking to get close to that. That is the fastest PB in this field. Zach Panning, 13.37 personal best for him. He'll wear hip number six. He runs for Hansons and Brooks. And his personal best is 13.37. Got Gerber Machezo in there too, 13.34 PB in his career on the track. Ran that in April of 2012. So Pacer taking these guys out at about 2.15 or so. That's Willis and Furlick that are going to take this thing out. Uh, ben Flanagan right now behind those Pacers, running number one at the moment. Appreciate the Pacers, appreciate the Rabbits bringing these guys in on schedule. 242 right there. And that's 20% of the way home. So I'll use this time to recap a little bit of our meet, what's well, been an excellent night of running so far. Started off with Jeremy Neff in the Masters Mile, 437 for him earlier this afternoon. Women's Mile on the Masters side, Julie Mercado, 533 for her to get things started. Then the lights came on, the sun went down, and in the 800, 
On the men's side, it was Michael Saruni, 146-13 for the win for him. And Sierra Brown on the women's side taking the win in two flat 31, just eight hundredths of a second ahead of Oklahoma State's Kayla Edwards. Kieran Tunivate, the Harvard man. A world leader, a personal best, 357.87 for him. He takes the win in the Lever Men's Mile, followed by Casey Nevelbard and Brian Barazin, 358 and 359. Five guys go below four minutes in the Men's Mile, but perhaps the headline, Reinhardt Harrison, the new Florida State record holder in the mile. And there has been a lot of dudes who have run fast mile times from the state of Florida. 401-34 for Reinhardt Harrison. He turns in maybe the performance of the night so far in that men's mile, representing the high schoolers who have been racing here this evening. Then we have the men's 1500. Oliver Hoare, a new Tennessee soil record of 334-63 for him, followed by Sam Prakel, Trip Hurt, Willie Fink, and Morgan McDonald. All of those guys, 337 or better in the men's 15. And in the women's 15, Corey McGee. She takes the win on that side of things with a new meet record, 403.64 and a personal best to show for it as well. Emma Coburn also takes home a personal best of 403.82. So through about 1,800, just under five minutes for our leaders here in the men's 5,000. Ben Flanagan still up there in the front. Joe still in as well. This thing totally single file. As they come up to 2K here in a moment. So you see Flanagan there in the blue and white kit. Followed by Stillen. And at 2K, about 528 so far. So almost to the halfway point. You've also got Jonathan Renewicki in there too. Wearing hip number 12, wearing the black singlet, competing unattached. 6.01 there with seven laps to go through 2,200. So coming up tonight for the rest of our meet, the Ponce Law Women's 5000 coming up at 9.30 p.m. here local time. So we'll have another 10, 15-minute break to hear from Billy Saveco and talk to our winner here in these final couple of kilometers. Got a good group there as well. Natasha Rogers of Hanson's Distance Projects and Brooks. It's going to headline that one. Sarah Sutherland, Jessica Drop, Olivia Platt, Maddie Alm, Anne-Marie Blaney, Devin Clark, the Arkansas Razorback. Lots of fast times coming in to that women's 5K. And then after that, normally we have a full high school meet schedule on the distance side of things here at the Music City Distance Carnival. Unfortunately, with the COVID-19 pandemic, just a 3,200, but uh, I say just a 3,200. It is going to be one of the fastest 3,200s you're going to see outside of a state championship kind of race. Jenna Hutchins, one of the top high school girls in the country, a two-time footlocker finalist on the cross-country side, and a Tennessee state record holder as a freshman in the mile that she set last year at MCDC. She will race coming up tonight at 10.30. A couple of guys that have made their way up to the front of this field. Farah abdul Karim, Ole Miss Rebel. He's competing unattached. He's up there near the front of that all-black singlet. Lots of racing to go, but this thing really starting to string out now. Coming up on 3K. Ben Flanagan, he's led the whole way. And he's going to continue to right here. 8.13 there. And not much left here in this one. Go, go, go. 
So Flanagan, who's been out in front the entire way, he'll continue to lead. And now this middle portion of this race is so important to continue to up the tempo a little bit, make sure that once the pacer goes off, you're not just immediately dropping the pace, but continuing to push that tempo. And Flanagan there at 8.52. With a little bit of a bigger pack there. I can't quite count all those guys, but maybe eight to nine dudes up there in that front pack. Christian Noble, formerly of Lee University, he's made his way there on the outside, sticking with it. Got Ian Lemire, about 10 guys. Now at 920. So at 3,200. Just another two miles plus a turn. Got Noble there on the outside. Who else is in that field? Alan Peterson running unattached. He's made his way there in the outside hip in the back of this pack. Ten oh five and string out a little bit, but Fair Abdul Kareem is right there in that mix as well, right on the inside. Anybody's race. Abdi Samet Abdi in there as well. Joe Stillen still just kind of hanging on the back of that pack. Ten thirty though right now, and not much left for these guys. Coming up on 800 left. These guys starting to kick it in. And now the racing will begin. Noble on the outside hip of Flanagan. Just staying right there. Abdul Kareem there as well. It is a tight pack coming up on 800 to go. Renowicki on the outside now. He's going to push Flanagan. Flanagan, the NCAA 10K champion from University of Michigan, trying to hold on to a lead that he has held for the entire race behind the Pacers. Totally single file now. And now they're going to start to kick. 600 to go at 12-10. This thing going to come all the way down to the wire. It's Abdul Kareem and Flanagan, followed by Abdi, Rhinowicki. We've got a tight finish. There's the bell, 12.39 with 400 to go. Flanagan has led the entire way. Now he gives it up here towards the end of this race. And who's got more? Farah looking strong now, starting to break just a little bit away. And now into the final turn at 13-11. This could be a big PB. Trying to break 13-46, career best. Strong into the final. 
And this time is going to be awfully good. Flanagan strong in second. But the meet record, folks, has gone down. We'll wait for the official time, but it is a good one. Meet record 1337 for Farah Abdul Karim. A personal best by just shy of 10 seconds. And they're saying hotty toddy for him. 1337. An all time best at MCDC. Personal best as well for Ben Flanagan. He did a lot of the legwork to lead this thing. 13.38.98 for him. He takes second. Personal bests for three out of the top four. Abdi, 13.42 in third. Jonathan Reinowicki, 13.44 for him in fourth. What a race it was, and what a finish for Farah Abdul Karim. Representing the Ole Miss Rebels all the way up here in SEC country in Nashville, Tennessee. Lots of PBs in that top ten, recognizing as well Christian Noble, Alan Peterson, Ian Lemire. 1348 for Christian Noble. That's a massive personal best for him. And his personal best coming in was 1446, so 58 seconds for Christian Nobles competed as a flame at Lee University. He'll leave Nashville with a massive new career best in the Ponzi Law Men's 5K here at the Music City Distance Carnival. So in about 15 minutes, we will race again in the final professional race of the night. It's the Ponzi Law Women's 5,000 meter run, and it's coming up next as you watch the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival. Hello, Gravity. We know you're there, and we know you can hear us. So listen up. For far too long you've been holding us runners down. You make us heavy, you make us slow, and at on, we're fighting back. On has reinvented the running shoe. It features clever hollow pots called clouds. They cushion horizontally for an incredibly soft landing. Then they become firm for an explosive takeoff. It's a complete step change. Land soft, yet start fast. It's like running on clouds. Compared to a conventional shoe, the On has a delayed touchdown. Last on the ground, yet first to start. Spend more time in the air.
The flexible clouds support your unique form right where you need it. Don't run. Fly. Sorry, gravity. The Better Business Bureau of Middle Tennessee has presented Ponzi Law with their prestigious 2017 Torch Award. This is our highest recognition, and it's one that the business earns from their own performance and reputation. The judges, for the first time, have selected the law firm, and the things that I saw were exceptional. This law firm has committed themselves to a standard that the Better Business Bureau upholds. Ponzi Law. Justice for all. A lot of the young young guns on the scene. That's awesome. Having a new a new group is not an easy thing. You know, how did you guys deal with this during COVID and all that too? Was that better because you had more time to kind of prepare and maybe meet and learn your athletes, or was it worse because you want to see that their fitness tested? During during COVID, it's been it's difficult for a lot of people. For us, uh, it was difficult just in trying to uh, just like everybody else trying to figure out what we wanted to do from a racing standpoint, but. I think it helped us a little bit to tell you the truth with, with signing people because um, On made the investment already. They said, we're going to do this, and this actually happened before things really shut down. So it just kind of has given us the year now to, you know, like we didn't have to jump right in and be like, all right, Tokyo yeah. is happening like mm -hmm. right now. Uh, we have a whole year to really get ready and to focus and get everybody fit. and. And so, like I said before, I, I mean, everybody was at a different point in where their training was. So we've come together all in good shape, but we also, um, I'm looking forward to a full year where everybody can get into the system. And, you know, I think mentally it's going to be important too. I mean, everybody, while well, our people are doing great and they're excited, which is, which is good. Yeah. There's also a mental strain of this whole thing. I mean, a lot of people are feeling it from, you know, from not knowing what they're going to do from week to week. And. So I said, we're just going to get fit. We're going to do, we're going to plan like we were going to race in August and we'll take our break after that. And just like we would if it was Tokyo or yep. COVID. It That's wasn't smart. Either way. That's <laughs> and, smart. With that being said, you know, what other races you guys have on your schedule? And, and I know it's hard to tell because things are canceled yeah. and come up there. But what's the rest of your season and when will you guys cap we, it off? We might only have one or two more real opportunities right now. And that's part of the reason why we did our time trial unofficial is the <laughs> most official unofficial uh, mile that we, yeah. you know, we did last week in, in Boulder. Um, it was just I said, you know what, I want them to see where they're at. And then it kind of snowballed over a couple days to trying to, to be in a little bit more than just us going out to the the track and but I said we're, we don't know what our our opportunities are going to be so if we have to make some we will so right now we're we're happy that Music City has put it on probably one of the best meets in the world this year you oh, know yeah. And oh yeah so we're taking that opportunity and then going forward uh, we'll probably hit LA for uh, for one of the meets and then after that we're just gonna have to decide a little bit like what what makes sense for people I don't really want people to continue going all the way into September super late but we might have one or two people that it makes sense to do that but I really want to get everybody back and started just take a breather see your family if you can and then let's let's get to work thinking about Tokyo for 2021 perfect all right we're gonna we're good how are we live oh my gosh we're hello we're live this is live on YouTube right now hell yeah Sarah, Abdul Kareem. Yes, sir. This man's in the house right now. I had to make sure I got his name right. <laughs> what did you do? What just happened? Explain to everyone. What just happened? Uh, dude, I, I came down thin. I just flew. No, what'd you run, dude? Tell, uh, tell the people. 1336. Woo! It's like a 10 second PR. Uh, a minute. Season's best because I rigged all indoors. So it's good. It's amazing. Dead. Amazing. Talk about what it feels like to finally do that. I know he's been a goal of yours for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought I was in shape to run in the 20s today Woo. and and just like I was able to talk the entire race never really felt like it got hard so whatever the next good race is I'm in it and I'll, and I'll PR a bunch again but just just good timing man yeah it's that was good. amazing he's running down the home stretch he's like putting up the fin he's, he's I never got to do it during my my old miss season so I have to do it now awesome so talk about what, it, what what was the magic tonight what was the difference uh you know me my buddy Casey over here wearing West Fly uh, our buddy Everett Smolders I love Everett uh, put it together he got us, uh, got us a little logo, and, and we put out. We represented it today, so 
we uh, you know, we've been training in Flagstaff for a while. Great place to train. A lot of amazing people out there. You Absolutely. Know, constantly just getting together, getting good miles in, and uh, man, when the confidence is there, when when the energy is there, I mean, Ollie ran fast, Casey ran fast. You know, some some really good times. Put out there today, you know, you just can't you can't not feel. What's up, buddy? Had some uh, rapid. Oh, he's trying to sew me up with the shirt to meet yeah, the director so, over here. So you know, like, I don't know. It's just about having your day. When you have your day, you let loose. So I didn't want to wait any longer. Usually wait until like 300. I don't really have the strongest kick, but I've decided that's not that's not it anymore. I'm gonna put it out there. So. Yeah, I know you're trying to run. You know, everyone's trying to run fast, no matter if you're pro or in college. Oh, but yeah. it was a pro field. You know, it was a pro field. Talk about what that was like to get yeah, a big you know, win in a pro field. Uh, my last big PR came when uh, when Mason was in the race and he was pacing today, so okay. he might be my good luck charm. Um, but you know, you just can't be scared. You put yourself out there because at the end of the day, you come down here to to be one of those guys. So. So hopefully I'm one of those guys. Yeah, I got the mustache going. You got the uh, hair pulled back for the first time? Yeah, yeah, you know, it might be a thing. Who knows? Headband for sure. So, shouts out to, to Mo Med for that one. Perfect, man. Anything else you got to say? One fun fact about yourself, non-running related. Uh, my favorite show is American Dad, <laughs> and I know what episode it is by what Roger comes up dressed as the alien. You memorize it that much? Oh, yeah, I'm like, oh, it's this episode. And, uh, and it's, yeah, it's bad, so... Awesome, man. No, that's a good thing. That's yeah. amazing. I love fresh fruits hey, the same way. All right, Howdy man. Howdy. Tell everyone you said hello. Brian Van Hoy just got married. Dude, shout out to Van Hoy. Uh, I love you, mom and dad, wherever you are. Um, and, dude, I have the best siblings in the world. I have the best family in the world. And some of the greatest friends out there. So, hey, Casey, get in here. West Fly. This is our debut. Real quick, real quick, guys. It's amazing right here. West Remember Fly, the name, boys. Dude. Hey, where are you, what do you go through at? 813 or something? Yeah, 813. Yeah. After running 358 flat. So. In the mile. Hell yeah. Boys. For the boys, dude. For the boys. All right, All right man. Thank you so much. You. Appreciate it, man. Congrats. That's amazing. We'll see you later. Cheers, brother. Yeet! Okay, here we go. Do, 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 do. We got the meat director, Dave Milner in the house. The hey, only buddy. guy that's wearing a cooler shirt than me. How's it going? What's up, bro? How, talk about tonight. What's going on? I'm exhausted, but I think this has all been worth it. We've had uh, three meat records so far. Uh, we've had uh, countless PBs. I mean, I can't even keep count. There were uh, six just in the 15. That 5K was absolutely phenomenal. 5K, so everything. Not expecting. The, the 1500s were outstanding. We got another really strong 5,000 meters coming up, and we still have two amazing high school races left. It's not, it's not over yet, but you know, it's fulfilling. It, it's done. It's going well. How's this feel for you? I uh, could use some Valium, but no, it's, it's been. It, there was definitely some challenges, and um, I'm sure uh, Cody Branch, my timing guy, is gonna um, want to kill me after this meet. But He's shaking his head yes. <laughs> hopefully, it'll all be worth it. He's never gonna want to work with me again. But. Um, no, it's, I think we pulled this together. There's a lot of challenges um, getting this thing to actually happen, and I think all the athletes are super appreciative. What's the magic of Run MCDC? It's, it's always always fast times here. I don't know. I think people are just relaxed here. It's just a, a chill vibe, and Duh. you got the meet director just cracking jokes and stuff. I don't know. It's, it's, people have fun. What do you want to see in the future of MCDC? Um, back to its original date. Okay. When it's a little bit cooler, typically, yep. and just keep on growing. Awesome. What about these sponsors? What about these guys? You think we cannot them do with them? This is lovely. this was Ons coming out party for their for their new group. Uh, we got Lever, we got Lip to Go, City Auto has been a huge part of this meet, and Michael Ponce, a local attorney, has been super supportive throughout the year. So we couldn't have done this without the sponsors and an amazing crew of volunteers. Um, you want to tell people about the rail? Oh my gosh! So here we go. This rail. 
you have to have a rail to make it, uh, I guess, official. And uh, we had, what was this? Four inch black pipe. It's four inch uh, it's like PVC tubing, yeah. PVC tubing, and it was moving around. It was, it was going everywhere. And I'm like, we're gonna cut this in half because they let me be the brains, which is a scary thing for that. But I somehow figured that out and I had the help of Austin and Max Paquette and we uh, cut this pipe in half so that it wouldn't roll. And if you can look on the stream, look a little closer, these next couple races is actually just pipe cut in half we're and just, it took forever, but it was worth it, it. We're keeping it legal for these runners. That's so. right, that's right. Yeah, but that's how the Cubic Zirconia League rolls. <laughs> All right, I better go start this next race. Well, get out of here, get out of here. All right, guys, we got a couple fast races coming up. You don't want to miss it because it's only going to get better. We'll see you guys soon for the next interview. Cheers. Ta -da! Women's 5,000 coming up next. It's brought to you by Ponzi Law. And it is our final elite section of the night. It's been a great night so far. A couple of Tennessee soil records, a pair of meat records as well to go along with that Tennessee soil record in the 1,500. And now 12 and a half laps around for the women in the 5,000 meter run. Best seed time coming into this one belongs to Natasha Rogers. Back in May of 2017, she was clocked in at 15.08. And she's also got an NCAA championship to her name. Back in 2012, she was the NCAA champion at 10,000 meters. And she represented a school that we have talked a lot about tonight, a school that we have seen a lot of winners from tonight. That's Texas A&M. So the Aggies have been very well represented here tonight in Nashville. Devin Clark is in this field as well. She wears hip number eight from the Southeastern Conference. She ran for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Clark, a 2019 All-American, two-time All-SEC, and she has a personal best of 1538. She ran that in the 2019 outdoor season. Anne-Marie Blaney will wear hip number nine. She has run 1539.57, and she ran that last June. Anne-Marie Blaney, a former UCF Knight. She'll start right beside Devin Clark and wear hip number nine. Sarah Sutherland is one of the other big contenders to watch in this field. Sutherland will be wearing the Saucony kit, and she'll be trying to get close to her personal best. That's the second best of this field at 1526. Sarah's season best in 2018, the last time she raced at 5,000 meters, was 1545, and she ran that at Drake University. Decorated career for her as well. She was a four-time All-American at Texas and Colorado. And she'll be in this field starting right in the middle of that pack as well. Right now, though, it's Natasha Rogers who leads. Right behind the pacer, Samantha Palmer who sets this thing. And Yolanda Grabe, I beg your pardon. She's the one setting the pace right now. Pretty bunched up, though. You've got Rogers. You've got Sarah Sutherland, who are out in front at the moment. And still lots of racing left in this one.
Let's try to see who else we got up there. You've got, I believe that's Matty Alm wearing hip number 10 in there as well. We're watching on a monitor calling this thing just like you guys are watching on your screen. So we're just calling the same angles that you guys have got. So far, so good. Single file. With nine to go coming up in a minute. Hannah Everson of Air Force also in there as well. She comes in at 1557. So a lot of runners that come in under 16 minutes. Olivia Pratt, Jessica Drop. Where's hip 11 coming in at 15.38? We've got Devin Clark, who we mentioned. Janelle Links as well, 15.59. So a lot of these ladies hoping to get under that 16-minute mark, maybe some of them for the first time. So they'll come up here on 1,200 here in a moment. We'll get a better picture of just what kind of pace they're on. So about 345 right there. So around 75, that's going to put you around 1537 to 1540. So we're on pace for a lot of these ladies to get under 16 minutes for the first time. And we'll come up on 1600. Now with nine left. My mistake the first time. So nine left at 422. Still lots to go, but this is that middle portion part of the race that certainly you want to focus on, that you want to kind of ratchet down that pace a little bit more every single lap. About five runners starting to break away now at the front of that pack. We're trying to get a better picture of who that is the next time they come around. Sarah Sutherland in there. Hannah Everson is in there. Natasha Rogers leading it. And yeah, they're going to pass our broadcast location right here. Maybe we'll get a picture of some of these hip numbers. So Wadichowicz of Colorado Springs Track Club, Jessica Wadichowicz, she's out in front, followed by Maddie Ulm, Valerie Constein, competing unattached in there as well, Hannah Everson, Natasha Rogers, all in there as well. Coming up on eight to go now. They are past that first mile plus, and this thing will start to string, off, string out just a little bit more through the middle portion of this race. Different runners like to kind of launch in this race at different times. Nearing the halfway point now as they're going to hit 2,000 meters here in a moment at a mile plus. A lot of runners like to wait till kind of that 2,000 to go mark. You want to focus on that first 2K kind of getting out and feeling comfortable, feeling good, but you start to actually race towards the end of this race start to feel that finish line a little bit and decide to cut things down closer to around 2K, some a mile, some wait even longer than that, depending on the race. But these ladies wanting to run personal bests, wanting to definitely ratchet down that pace as it's still Natasha Rogers, Olivia Pratt, and Maddie Ulm, and Hannah Everson out in front right now. Seven laps to go at 6.51 right now. So uh, still uh, right around that 15.30, 15.40 pace. But we'll see what happens once these ladies start to feel that finish line, like I said, here at the end and cut down this pace a little bit.
So at 7.27, when they come around this time, it'll be six laps to go. And now you start to think about racing this thing a little bit. Right around the halfway point of this race. And you talk about launching points in a 5K, that 2,000 kilometer left mark starting to get a little bit closer. There'll be a 2,400 right here. And this thing really starts to string out even more. Got times all across the board on runners coming into this one, but we knew that the lower end of this field was going to be led by Natasha Rogers, the 2012 NCAA champion at 10,000 meters and a three-time All-American for the Texas A&M Aggies. She's not going to get that 1508 PB unless something big changes here at the end of this race, but Rogers has led this thing from the beginning, and now it's a field of four ladies that have broken away. Rogers, Sarah Sutherland, Hannah Everson, and Maddie All. That's your top four right now as it stands. Rogers at 15.08, like I said. Sarah Sutherland's PB, 15.26.59. Hannah Everson of U.S. Air Force, 15.57.78. And Maddie Alm, 15.41. She has run this season and was clocked in at 16.07. So two kilometers left, five laps to go. 9.19 with 2K to go. So it remains Natasha Rogers. About 15.20, 15.30 pace, or 15.40 rather. So pretty much on schedule with what we've seen the entire time. Rogers at 1,500, 417 her best there. At 3K, 940. An NCAA champion ran that in Des Moines, Iowa. 3241 for Rogers back on June the 7th, 2012 to make her an NCAA champion. Last time she had a season best was 2017 in the 5K, ran 15.08 in Los Angeles, May 18th, 2017. And in the 5K on the road, 15.39, 2017, and 2019, 16.40 in a road race. She's also been clocked in at 33.38 for 10,000 meters up in Massachusetts on July the 18th earlier this summer. So she has been able to race this year uh, certainly a little bit of an advantage over uh, some of those ladies or, or any of the runners in this meet who have really just waited to race tonight to kind of open their season here under the lights here in Nashville. Starting to pick up the pace a little bit, looking more like maybe a 15.30 could be within reach for these runners. Sarah Sutherland of Saucony and Hannah Everson have now made this a pack of three out in front. Everson, back in October of 2019, ran her 5K PR in China. 15.57.78. So that looks to be totally out of, the, out of question at this point. Everson is very likely going to set a personal best tonight, being led right now in this excellent group. So Sutherland and Everson following Natasha Rogers. Coming up on three to go. Hannah Everson looking for a big personal best. So they're about to hit 4K. We'll get a better idea of exactly where these ladies are going to be, but it is now a maybe a two-woman race with Rogers and Everson out in front. Everson ran a 5K in 2019 in that 
57, like I said, but hadn't run one since 2016 when she ran that in 2019. Her previous career best was 16.22 that she ran in San Diego back in 2015, then breaks 16 for the first time in 2019, and now looking to get well below 16 minutes tonight following Natasha Rogers of Brooks. 12.28 at four kilometers. So certainly below 16 minutes for Everson, likely for the second time in her career. But Sarah Sutherland still not totally out of the picture. She's still there in third. Two laps to go, 800 meters left in our elite meet program tonight to close the book on MCDC before the high schoolers take the track in 15 minutes. This is a massive run for Hannah Everson just following the lead of the 2012 NCAA champion Natasha Rogers. Who's going to be the one to make that dramatic kick in the final couple of laps in this race? Just over 600 meters remaining. You can see the grimace on the face of the veteran Natasha Rogers as she leads Everson right now with Sarah Sutherland continuing to run in this stretched out field to close MCDC 2020. Still between Everson and Rogers. Everson right behind her. That's where she's been for the entire race. Does Hannah Everson decide to just go for it here against the veteran and Rogers? Or does she wait just a little bit longer to make her move with two or 300 to go? We're going to find out right here as we get the bell. 14.23 with a quarter mile remaining. Somebody's getting below 16 minutes in that front two. They both definitely will. How far below 16 minutes can they get? It is Rogers and Everson. They've been bunched up for the entire race. And now here comes Hannah Everson on the outside. Everson pushing. Churning the legs, pumping the arms to get around the veteran and Rogers. She's done that. Now can she hold this lead? She passes 15 minutes. She passes 200 meters to go. It is anybody's race. And Hannah Everson looking the strongest out of this field and looking to get well below 16 minutes in that 15.57 personal best. She turns for home with 100 meters to go, and her new personal best is out the window. Hannah Everson from the U.S. Air Force flying through the finish. She takes the win in the women's 5,000-meter run. 15.32, a 25-second improvement on her career best time. And, folks, that is a meet record as well, officially on your screen, 15.31.97. Everson, who came in almost a half of a minute off of that meet record with her personal best, leaves MCDC, the queen of the 5K in Nashville at Music City. Natasha Rogers, a great run for her as well. She did a lot of the work to lead that thing for most of the race. 15.34.75 for her. Sarah Sutherland of Saucony rounds out the top three in 1546. And a season best for Maddie Alm, who clocks it at 1549. Closely followed by Annie Rodenfe Rodenfels, who also posts a new personal best in 1549. So you'll watch him finish here in a moment. You'll hear from Hannah Everson. She'll chat with Billy Saveco in a moment. But when we come back, the final two races of the night, it's time for the high schoolers. The high school boys, 3,200, coming up next a 10:15 Central start time as you watch the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival.
but then we have fun at practice too. Yeah. So speaking of fun, like you know, like you said, you got to have people from all over the globe, uh, all kind of awesome characters. You know, who's who's one of the people that you've got to, I guess, become close with or know, and who's one of the characters on the team? Or tell us, talk about the personalities. They they have such different personalities. It's kind of mind-boggling. I mean, uh, Ollie is kind of a goofball, you know, but very once he gets out there, like when he's ripping on the track, like he won't say a word, but. The rest of the time, yeah, he's a complete goofball. Carlos is just, yeah, that guy is so raw. Like he doesn't, he doesn't realize I think how good he is, and so he just kind of, he just has fun with it. Joe is like the most business person. Like <laughs> he will check off all the boxes first, you know. And then Jordy, I just, I just, I see a lot in Jordy. I really wanna, I wanna help him so much because I think that he's, he's got so much potential. Just needs, just needs to figure out, you know, a few things. On the women's side, though, like. You know, my, my two women, Leah and Emily, that I brought on the team, they're a little bit older, and so I think they do bring some perspective, but uh, Alicia is like, I mean, she's got so much energy, like, she makes me feel like I gotta, you know, take downers to get there, you know, <laughs> at, at practice. So it's always good to have, and then Alicia is just so, so calm, like, I don't think anything could rattle her. So um, it's a good mix, you know, like, it's like looking at a superhero lineup to me, and so, um, you know, we'll hopefully add some people to the team, you know, over the next year or two, and, and uh, but we have a good dynamic now, and so that's, that's important to, to start there, and, you know, just, I think everybody, you know, helping each other along the way is good, but uh, I, I think, you know, when, when they race, they want to beat each other too, and that's important. Yeah, talk about it. Like you know, again, you had experience from you being a professional runner. You have Leah and Emily. They've been on the scene for a couple of years. You know, have they given any advice, or what's advice you have to these new athletes? That I mean, again, at the end of the day, yeah, they're just running circles, but it's a whole different scene, and it's a little more business. And you, you know, you have, you have a yeah. message that you told pro, them, kind of. Pro running is not co collegiate running. Yeah. It's different. I mean, there's just there's different variables. There's different motivating factors, and. They have agents and they have, you know, like they have goals that it, it's their goals now, you know, like they, like the On Athletics Club, we want to do great as a team, but at the end of the day, these guys, it's important what they do for themselves. And so um, that's a big, that's a big change, I think, from that collegiate setting where they're in. And so, well, the team can help motivate some people. They have to be like intrinsically motivated. And so I try, I'm just trying to help them build the confidence because you know like they already like it they already they are most of them already have that kind of killer instinct but just putting them in the right situations I think is important and then dealing with the outside factors you know like maybe in college they're you know they're insulated from a lot of those things here it's 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 a different world it's professional sports and you know they're we are sitting around watching Monaco today and they all want to be there you know next year you know it's it's a step but you know, after having done all those Diamond League races and stuff myself, it's, I think uh, I think it's important to have at least have that experience because it's a di it's a different world when you fly in and and oh, yeah. it's uh, there's 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 a lot bigger stage and it's it's hard to sometimes look past you know those things. So hopefully hopefully they'll just continue to build that trust in me and we'll have those opportunities. Perfect. You know, when you first saw this on shoe, you know, what was going through your head? And like, did you guys have a say in the colors or the, or the logo or anything like that? Like so yeah, the, the, you know, when we launched the team and stuff, uh, that first started with Andy Weeding and Steve DeCoker, you know, they, those guys had the idea. Um, I think they brought it to the executive team and Olivier Bernhard, you know, the, one of the co-founders of the company, he's like intimately involved in this process. Uh, we had, conversations with it like I mean I have conversations with them the athletes have and I think it's unique and so you know when we talked about product and development that was something that was a huge sell to the team because I mean they can talk on the phone with one of the founders I mean he's still involved in the R&D stuff and so they want their input they want they want to see what these guys it makes the difference at high level and so you know, we, we, we have people who have been into town already meeting with them and, awesome. and the process is fast. Whereas, you know, cause nowadays it's a changed world with footwear and stuff. So I'm, I'm excited to just see where we're, what's already three steps down the pipeline, which we've been able to get a lot of that, you know, see that stuff, be, be involved in that stuff. And so, you know, when I put the shoes on, you know, it was, uh, it was, you know, I'm getting behind a company, like, I got to believe in their product too, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, so I had to try these things on. I mean, Andy sent me a box of everything they have. And, uh, and then I've had to, I didn't put on the spikes yet, because if I put on spikes, I probably would never walk again. <laughs> but, uh, 
but the racing flats, you know, I put those on. I was like, I gotta, I gotta at least test it out, you know, and, and I don't run hundred miles a week anymore, but I'm on a steady diet of, you know, 30 to 40 miles a week still. And so, That's awesome. so I gotta, I gotta get behind anything that we do. And so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done that if I didn't believe that we would have the best of the best. And I really think that this company is going to continue to push that innovation. And, and this, this team is excited about that too. Awesome. Any, I, I know. Here we go. Come on in. She said her last name is too long for, to teach me how to pronounce, so we got Haruni here. What, what's this flag on your back? This is the Sri Lankan national flag, and Incredible. I just renewed the national record by the skin of my teeth, but we got it done. How much was it? By like two hundredths of a second. Hey, record's a record. It's yeah, amazing. It so talk about what that's what that's like to do here tonight. Uh, so. I've been eyeing this record for so long, yeah. and this year has been so crazy. Didn't even know this was going to happen, but Dave put it together. That's right, Dave gets it done. The hard work of everyone, so shout out to Music City and Dave. Uh, this is not something I do. I'm a marathoner, but you got to take opportunities when they come around now. So Absolutely. Decided to step on the track and see what I could do. How cool was it for you that when you crossed the finish line, you saw the flag? Well, I saw it when I was doing my stride, uh -huh. and I was like, how sick would it be to finish today and to like wrap this around my shoulder? Absolutely. So that's what kept me going those 12 and a half laps. Amazing. That's, a, that's so cool to see that. I know I get pumped anytime I see. Um, so I lived on the West Coast, and I was far away from Penn State, and I know it's not a national flag, but anytime I saw a Penn State logo, oh, I was course. like, oh, I'm home. Same. So, I went to feeling. the University of Kentucky, so every time I see the Wildcat flag, I'm like, I beat, beat blue. So, so this is even better, because yeah, that, that's amazing. So, um, you know, talk about that. This is a lot different than a marathon. You know, uh, how'd that feel, and is that the lowest, is that the quickest race you'll do in the near yes, future? Yes, <laughs> uh, quickest race I'll probably do for a long time. Yeah. I hold 10 national records already. Uh -huh. This was the elusive unicorn that I couldn't yes. quite get. Okay. Uh, so every time, every year I do one track race, I was just joking about it to a friend, and I've been chasing this for like five years now, and I just couldn't get it done, but leave it to 2020 to make miracles happen. That's amazing, that's right, that's right. I saw you were just talking to one of your fellow, uh, fellow friends over there, and you said that you don't pack the flag. Why is that? Is that bad luck or something? I think it's a bad omen. Okay. Um, it's almost like counting your uh, chickens before they hatch uh -huh. kind of deal. Okay, okay. So I just got lucky today that this happened to be here, and I get to wrap it around my shoulders. Awesome. What's next? What are some goals you're going to be looking for for races or the marathon or what? Yeah, uh, I'm looking to get the Olympic standard in the marathon, 229.30. Awesome. Pretty close to it, but okay. not quite there. Okay. So, uh... The, the track stuff is, uh, I'm going to leave it to the speedsters to there do we that. Go. This is good enough for me, but that's what I'm going to be looking for. Awesome. One fun fact about yourself, non-running related, and then we're done. Um, I'm obsessed with dogs. If I could have a collection of anything, I would have dogs. So I'm so sorry to my husband for that. Give me your top, like, five or three. Three. Labs, Golden Doodles, and the Newfoundland. Ooh. I like them big and fluffy. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> amazing. you got to get two of those, though. I yes, saw this person in New York sure. that had, like, two or three of them, and I was oh, like, that's the best ever. <laughs> had a herd. Awesome. Thank you so much. Congrats so much. today. It was amazing. Thank Congrats. You. Congrats. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Next up. I believe, did you have like a minute or it was like a 25 second? It, yeah, like 25 second PR. 25 second PR. Yeah. This is live on YouTube right now. Tell them what's up. How you guys doing? Hi. <laughs> so talk about that. That's incredible. What was the difference today? I mean, yeah. No, we've been, I haven't run a fast or paced 5k since yeah, college so yeah. um, it's been a long time coming we've just been really putting in the work uh -huh. um, through the covid months and just wanted to come out here and get a big pb so it happened it happened for was, sure. was that the goal the, you know the, over 30 over the, 20 seconds the goal was just to compete put myself near the front Always and is, yeah. um, see how long i could hang on so yeah that's the first time it's gone to plan <laughs> <laughs> no stop that well what was what was the difference you think tonight you know is it just finally racing after spending a long time being fit or what was yeah, I, I think it's just, uh, this might sound bad, but it just felt like a little bit more pressure because this might be one the of our only, only one, opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think, yeah, I just wanted to, I want to help my speed for the 10K uh -huh. next um, summer at the trials. So 
this is a good opportunity to do that. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Um, so what's next on the schedule? You don't know? Do you have anything I, else? I, t to be determined. To be determined? <laughs> yep. Cool. What are some goals for uh, next year? Um, try to get the Olympic standard in the 10K. Yep. Um, try to get to the Olympics in the 10K. That would be amazing. Yep, and that's that's all I'm shooting for right now. Yeah, just the Olympics. That's good. <laughs> <Yep>. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tell me what, what, what this meet is tonight. You know, this is a really cool opportunity. I've seen a lot of stuff going on in Portland and little, like, almost dual meets or something beyond uh, amongst teams. Talk about how cool it was to finally see racing going down with other teams, other pros. There's some high schools mixed in. Right. No, it was it was really hard to um, sit and watch, like, all these super fast meets going yes. on. And, um, yeah, we were just waiting for an opportunity that was open to more groups and more people. Um, and this showed up and we were like yes let's get on the start line yeah so you know so other maybe some people don't know maybe they yeah. heard but like you had to be tw tested twice this week right yes. <laughs> so it is safe they're yeah. good to go but uh yep. you know was that difficult or was that a process that was it um i know everyone's had different things where you're living yeah, and getting yeah, the results um, back yeah i was able to get um both my tests through uc health and um they were gracious enough to let me get two before i got like the first test result back um, okay, but so yeah you, you come back. um a couple of my friends that i came here with had yeah. to go get a third one at walgreens like very yeah, last minute. Yeah, yeah yeah um it was kind of stressful but we got it done it's a weird time it is it huh? is so it is all right one fun fact about yourself non-running related oh, um my favorite song on folklore is okay. exile <laughs> all right all right nice How's all that? Right. <laughs> perfect thank you so much and congrats on the pb awesome. thank Cheers. you yep, thanks all right what do we have next what's going on next guys i think we got like some high school races going down 3200 boys and girls it's going to be amazing 10 15 it's cracking we got will bowling over will you want to come over here and talk Why not? we're just hanging out we're just hanging out. We want to keep you guys entertained. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Let's go. That's social distancing. Best of three. Here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. We got one. Whoa. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Whoa. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, dang it. All right, here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Winner gets it. Oh, Yeet. come on, man. All right, cool. So what's going on tonight? Will's been doing an amazing job with the broadcast. Hey, appreciate He's it. doing a one-man show over there. It's not a one-man show. We've been preparing for a long time. We right. have timers three of the best timers in the world prime timing over there i think i said that right we'll see if he looks at me weird but uh <laughs> no, you got it. we love him over there and he's Cody been Branch doing a great job doing a great job you're doing a great job we got these high schoolers you guys ready to rumble or what let's go let's go let's, hey, let's go let's let's guys they're passing the right, yeah, the we love right it. here and they're ready to rip it it's going to be amazing um how cool is it do you think these high schoolers get to you know kind of warm up in the same area that oh, emma awesome. colburn Corey mcgee yeah how cool is that? How, did awesome. you ever get any opportunities like that when you were in high school? I ran MCDC in, oh gosh, 2013 and 2014. Yeah. I uh, ran the 5K one year. Uh, I think I ran a mile another year. And, I mean, it's just so cool to be able to see up close and personal the runners you see on TV. Oh, yeah. The runners you follow, the runners you want to be like. It kind of gets real for you when you see it in person. And it's it makes a big difference. And you kind of jumpstart, hey, let, let's take this running thing to the next level. Once you exactly. You kind of see an Emma Coburn race at a place like this. Really, really cool night for sure. It's cool, and it's in your you know hometown. It's amazing, right? Nashville, Tennessee, baby. This meet has grown so much too. I know that Dave Milner has done an excellent job, and I know you just spoke with him as well about yeah. growing this thing. But man, I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's it's been really cool, and you know, obviously, hey, we can't do it in June and, and do it at Vanderbilt too. But Lipscomb has been great having us here, and uh, certainly thankful we could figure out a way to way to do this thing. Tonight. Yeah, with people like Dave Milner, you know, it'll get done. You don't know how or why or when, but it'll get done. <laughs> That's, that's the magic. Smart. You, that's smart you say that as he runs by. Yeah, he was running by. You know, you got to suck up <laughs> to the meet director there. <clears throat> um, right. Anyways, yeah, you know, that's a cool thing about track. Like, I did football, basketball, baseball in high right. school. And, you know, who were my favorites? I liked uh, Barry Bonds back in the day. I don't know if you like that. The Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa <laughs> thing was crazy. But right. uh, those are some of the guys I grew up watching. You had Randy Johnson, amazing pitchers. Yeah. But there's no chance in heck I was ever going to get to, you know, meet them, let alone warm up in the same area, let alone right. t take talk to them right after their right. game, unless I was very lucky. So. That's a cool thing about track is, you know, the community is really close and they are so nice to everyone. And, it, you know, they're just yeah. relaxed and you can walk up and approach them on social media. I know a lot of them respond to their DMs, which is amazing. Definitely. And it kind of gives you hope as a high school kid when you get to talk to or, you know, bump elbows. Some of them are racing against uh, their, uh, their, their heroes, you right. know. It's crazy. I mean, you, you go watch a football game and after the fourth quarter, it's not like you're going to go out there and play a football game, right? Like I'm going to try, no, but it's not going to be good. <laughs> I mean, we could. I don't know if it lasts very long, but... Uh, or if anybody want to watch it, but like, give me these high school runners, they get to run on the same facility the same night. I mean, that's that's so cool to kind yep. of the energy, the vibe in this place. 
you know, you see Tennessee soil records and then these high schoolers get to, you know, try to break their own school records and, you know, try to get ready for the cross country season. All right. So I got some in mind, but what was your favorite performance of tonight so far? It's not over yet. So don't go home. But what do you got? Man, always cool to see Corey McGee and Emma Coburn race. Absolutely. Uh, you know, those two teammates work so hard together. But um, it, that's the other cool thing about this sport, Billy, as you know, is um, yes, your teammates, yes, you train together. But that final 100, that's that's your uh, that's your for opponent the, right there. For the heart right there, bro. <laughs> that's right. So you got it more. Who wants it more? So that was really cool. Uh, you know, two straight meet records now for those for that duo. Emma said it last year. Corey said it tonight. Um, that was really cool. Farah, great race for him wow. in the 5K a couple minutes wow. ago. Uh, Hannah Everson just now. I mean, a 30-second PR. That's that's huge for Very her close. as well. Uh, that men's 1500, though. Yeah. In incredible. The amount of records we've we've seen set tonight uh, on late notice and rescheduling this thing, it, you wouldn't know it. These guys seem to be in, in top form right now. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, you know, something you didn't, you didn't mention. I'm surprised. Okay. This is uh, what is this Tennessee mile split over here? Right. Okay. And he didn't talk about the 202 from a freshman. Right. And he didn't talk about the other guy. What did he run? 403 or one or something? Breaking Ches's sophomore 401 high by two seconds. He's, anytime you're breaking a record of King Cheserek, you know that That's this man means some business. The good thing. And he shattered it by two <laughs> seconds. That's insane. Like, you know, come on, Miles Blit. Hey, I'm sorry. All right, all right. Hey. Just busting them. Just busting them. Florida State record in the mile. I mean, you break any record from the Sunshine State, you are oh, doing something. It's right. a huge track state. Right. Um, but, you know, so that those are probably cool to me just because, you know, uh, what was her name? Sophie? Yep. She. Gory she, Yeah, she was doing, uh, she told me she just qualified for the All-American in um, uh, lacrosse. Yo, wow. So she said she didn't run for like 10 days or something while she was just trying to make that team. That's awesome. And then she comes out here and runs a two. She's two outlasting two. everybody in her lacrosse oh. games. At the end. Oh, yeah, for sure. She's got the energy. She's got the Her the run endurance. circles around everybody. That's why, why she's good. She's just doing some tricks right around right, there. Right, right, right. So uh, what are some other fun things? I mean, when are we starting here, Will? What do you got on the clock? So I got eight minutes until this high school boys 32. We got a lot of guys that are going to be. they have be... questions on the feed if anyone's watching? We're going to get, get Austin. It's yeah, about I a 30-second delay. Minutes. So we're going to talk minutes. for a second. But, um, um, high school boys 32, we got a lot of guys that are going to be right around nine flat. Whew. None of these dudes have broken nine yet. I gotta think that's gotta be the goal tonight. A hundred percent. How many boys will we get under nine? Under nine minutes, man. Send it in your be, comments. It's a what good do you guys night think? to run. It feels good out here. I mean, it's kind of humid, but it's not really hot like it maybe was for for the Masters races at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but Bill, we're about to see one of the best distance runners on the girls' side in Tennessee high school history. And my girl, and Jenna. Jenna Hutchins. Woo! from Science Hill High School all the way up there. You know the song Wagon Wheel from Johnson City, Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, that's her. She actually um, just bought a toad shirt. I couldn't get it to no her to me. So toadlife.com, hey. that's my first time hitting that. It's big so I don't for the wanna, brand. I don't want to get aggressive <laughs> with that, but she got a toad shirt. So. Um, she's going to be racing. She set the Tennessee state record in the mile in the 1600 at this meet at Vandy, June 2019. So only five girls, Billy, in Tennessee history have broken 1030. In Oof. the 3200, so she's looking to. Rebecca to get Story, in that group. is she one of them? Absolutely. She's one of my favorites. She's in that amazing. one as well from CAK in Knoxville. Shout out to East Tennessee. Uh oh, we got some Love questions. That. Austin, what do we got? Our first off, we got a comment saying, nice frog shirt. Let's You're, go. It's a toad, but nice try. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. That's what we got. Um, and they also want to know who the pacer is for the boys 3200, which is Patrick Pierre. Patrick Pierre. Uh, and what time are they going out in? 10 15. Oh, what time are they going out in? I'm not entirely sure what time. I'm not Will, positive you get any either. notes? That's a, that's Max, what time are these rabbits going out in? I'm going to guess they're going to try to be 4.30 at the mile. You would want to try to break, yeah, you're right. going to try to. It's going to be 4.30, 4.35-ish. 4.35, any other questions? We're going to find out. 4.26. There you go. You heard it from him right here. He's right here off camera. We're going to get some dudes under nine tonight. That's what I'm hearing. It's going to be amazing. Any other questions, Austin? Did they all leave? They all left the stream because Emma Coburn's <laughs> gone? Come on, guys. <laughs> hey, we got two good races left. Uh, Three. Me and Will are going to race 100 meters after this. It's going to be live. So you're going to have to buy a subscription. We got an ice though. pack ready? Anybody? Uh, maybe a foam roller for that? I mean, 100 meters? That's it? <laughs> yeah, I could do that. Fun. That'll be yeah, fun. So what are some other things? So next weekend, they got the Ed Murphy Classic. That's right. Memphis, Tennessee, baby. You know, a lot of those runners that run there or yep. run here run there. Yep. Um, last year, I don't remember the exact number, but there were four or five girls under 404, I think. It, it was crazy. It, it was amazing. That so, was Emma Coburn and Corey McGee's PBs at the time. Yep, and Helen, I uh, can't pronounce her last name. Schladenhofen. There you go. Yep, she was she there won. as well. It was a lot of the same people that were here at MCDC in 2019 as yep. well, but uh, I'll be on the call for that one there. I know we're looking forward to, to being back there again. We're taking this show on the road uh, to the 901. 
next weekend. So you're looking. It'll be to fun. Do. It'll be fun. I can't wait. Um, I'm trying to think what else we can say here. We got five minutes. Five minutes. Are there anyone? Is there anyone on the stream anymore, Austin? <laughs> uh, hey, they're there. there's, there's over a thousand people. Over a thousand people are watching us. What, what do they want us to do? Handstands? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm down. No, this has been fun, Bill. It's been, uh, it's just good to watch. I, I know uh, you'll agree with me on this. It's, it's obviously very fun to watch live sports again. Yeah. It's fun to talk about left turns again and talk about this sport that yeah, I know you love and I, I love it, of course, as well, from the high school level up to the pro level. And good to have a meet in a community like this. And I know you, you talked to Emma about this as well. And yeah. it's really cool that. Yeah, these runners are, are running the Diamond League. They're running in Europe. They're running all over. They've, they're NCAA champions, SEC yeah. champions, everything. But when you get a community to come together, you got people lining the rail out here. Yeah, you can't come in, I but mean, we that's got awesome. some people outside. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's really cool. <laughs> really cool. Good stuff. Yeah, now's the time, I guess, I'll do this. I'll say hi, Mom and Dad. Uh, Erie PA. <laughs> Will. Love it. I guess the pals over there, Brentwood. Right. Hey, yeah, uh, making the short drive from, from Brentwood to here, it's uh, it's – uh, it's about 10 minutes from home here. This is great. This is, yeah, man. This is a great place to be. Cartwheel. You're doing a cartwheel? Man, That's where I think that's where I bow out. So, Billy, I think uh, you're going to go ahead and You're going to let that. me talk for the last five minutes? Well, i got to go get ready to call this race. We'll do we a cartwheel in 30 seconds. Three, four minutes. So I'm going to let you do whatever. I'm going to let you oh, answer gosh. another question. I'm going to go get ready to call this meet. And we got two good high school races coming Let's on go. up. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go, baby. All right. A cartwheel. I haven't done a cartwheel since... Uh, All right, so here we go. The Elliptigo Boys 3200 meter run. And then the Elliptigo Girls 3200 to finish this thing off. You heard uh, the pacer a minute ago. Randy Pierre telling us that we are going to be going out looking for sub nine minutes. They're going to bring these guys out in 426. And that is moving. New Jersey native Jackson Braddock. On the inside, wearing hip number one. He is the man to watch in this race. He's run 906.68 this outdoor season. He's on the inside. He's made a long trip from Southern Regional High School out of New Jersey, and he'll be there on the inside. Locally, you've got Kevin Vanderkolk from Brentwood High School, just maybe 10 minutes down the road from where we are right now at Lipscomb Academy. The top in-state competitor looking to break a 9.17 career best against a solid field tonight, featuring 27 guys who are here scheduled to run tonight in this 3,200. So final instructions from our starter. We've got local guys. We've got... Guys from all over who have come here to run this 3200, getting set for a cross-country season, whatever that looks like in their state. Here's your barometer, your test of how fit you are going into it. They'll get underway, and here we go. Eight laps around the track here at Lipscomb Academy in Nashville, Tennessee. 3200 meters for the high school guys and girls to finish off the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival. So the meet record that is going to be under attack tonight was set a year ago in the 3200. Keshawn Harrison ran 8.55.27. He came all the way from New Mexico, from Kirtland High School, to set that meet record a, a season ago. On the girls' side, you'll see Jenna Hutchins, like Billy and I were just discussing a moment ago, and she will be looking to break a meet record of 10.23 set by Emma Wilson of Greencastle High School out of Indiana. So lots of states have been represented at this meet. 
tonight. It's New Jersey taking center stage in Jackson Braddock. He's followed by Isaiah Story, who competing unattached, and Kevin Vanderkolk in their one, two, and three. And they come through in 66. So that's quicker than what the pacer is taking them out in right now. Patrick Perrier setting that pace around 67s, but that was a 66 right there. So the pacer is a little bit behind right now. Or maybe a even a little bit ahead of the scheduled time. So 140 through 600. Braddock, Sturry, and Vanderkolk. So we'll tell you a little bit more about Jackson Braddock. Southern Regional High School, we told you that. He made a long trip down here from the great state of New Jersey. It's not a quick trip. Certainly some logistics involved in that to get from New Jersey to Nashville, especially during a pandemic. But Braddock, as we said, came in with the fastest time around 9.06 and is going to be in contention to perhaps break a meet record. He and Sturry are starting to break away. Kevin Vanderkolk, though, sitting in a good spot, still within contact of those guys out in front through two laps plus. Braddock, a 4.19 mile runner indoors in the 2020 season, 4.21 at 1,600 in the 2019 indoor season and in 2019 outdoors ran 954 and then 2020 indoors ran 906 that is quite an impressive increase from one season to another for Jackson Braddock from the state of New Jersey who now is looking to go below nine minutes so you go from breaking 10 just over a year ago and now you're trying to break nine that is an outstanding progression as he comes through in 319 there with 400 meters to go in this opening mile. I'll tell you about a couple of the guys in that chase pack wearing hip numbers 20 and 19. That's Will Cahill and Griffin Stodd in that big chase pack back there. So really you've got the front two. You've got Kevin Vanderkolk just kind of sitting in between the leaders and the chasers. And that's a tough place to be as well because you're trying to feel the contact of the guys in front of you while also hearing the footsteps behind you. It, it is so quiet here that maybe Kevin can still hear those guys behind him. It's certainly different running in an atmosphere like this. No fans in the stands. You've got some parents, some friends that have lined the gate outside the stadium here at Lipscomb Academy, but no noise to kind of make you feel the pressure, make you feel the moment a little bit. You've got to manufacture a little bit of energy and get yourself pumped and ready to race. 424.5 through a mile. So Jackson Braddock, a year removed from breaking 10, is on pace for 850. Can he keep this up? The senior starting this fall from New Jersey trying to stay on the pace of Patrick Perrier. Vanderkolk running third, as we said. Cahill, Stodd, and Colin Mayfield make up this front group. You've also got Ansel Tucker behind them in that chase pack. Jack Shearer is there, too. But right now, this is the Jackson Braddock and Isaiah Sturry show following the pace. Coming up on 1,200 meters remaining, just three laps around this track here at Lipscomb Academy. Pacer maybe breaking away just a little bit more from Braddock, but he still looks really strong right now, running in the heat and humidity that he's perhaps not as used to being from New Jersey. That was 534 there with three laps to go. So this pace certainly slowing down now, getting closer to 68, 69 seconds per lap. 
So nine flat certainly going to be within reach, but might be getting a little bit tougher. Maybe that time getting away from these guys just a little bit. But Braddock still has Sturey there right behind him to help him. And those guys are, are going to try to work together here to get below nine minutes. Isaiah Sturey from Angola High School in Angola, Indiana, the class of 2022, has run a couple of times this outdoor season at the Illinois Meet of Champions. He ran 4.12 for 1,600 and 9.15 for his personal best at the Midsummer Nights Distance Open back on July the 7th. So he's had a busy outdoor season. He's had the luxury of being able to still race. And right now he is in a one-on-one -on -one battle with Jackson Braddock from New Jersey. So the Midwest to the Northeast battling for the first spot. You see Kevin Vanderkolk starting to drop back a little bit more towards the rest of the pack. They're behind him in third. But Braddock and Story are coming up now on 600 left. 7.16, looking to break nine minutes for the first time. Jackson Braddock still leading the way and perhaps is making a little bit of a move on Story. Yep, there you go. He's starting to really break away a little bit. 4.02 at the New Balance Games in January for 1,500. A 159.800 P PB. And he is getting awfully close to sub nine minutes. Got to take a nice final lap, though. See exactly what he needs here. 7.50 with a lap to go. So he just needs 70 seconds on the final quarter mile. And he'll get below nine minutes for the first time in his high school career. And a reminder again, March 8th, 2020 at the New Jersey Indoor Meet of Champions ran 906.86 for what was a 10-second PR at the time. Now looking for 10 more seconds off that personal best. And he's leading Story from Indiana. Takes a quick peek over his left shoulder. Close to 200 to go. And he can start to feel the finish line a little bit. About 8.22, so he needs 38 seconds on this final 200 this should be well within reach for Jackson Braddock from Southern Regional High School. Turning for home the final time here in Nashville. 20 seconds separating himself and sub nine. Braddock starts to churn those legs just a little bit quicker. He will get below nine minutes. He will take the win tonight. Right around 8.54, your winner. And a new meet record for Jackson Braddock in the 3200. Jimmy Malarkey is going to lead that chase behind him. As you see them finish up here. Isaiah Sturey, also an excellent race for him. 857.17 for him. So two guys go sub nine tonight under the lights here in Nashville. And Jimmy Malarkey rounds out that top three. 914.06. Tell you more about these times as they come across. Zane Bergen coming fourth in 915. James Overberg fifth in 916. Lucas Hogg, 9.17 and 6th. Kevin Vanderkolk, he matches his personal best with another 9.17. Ansel Tucker, 8th, 9.21.66. Will Cahill comes in 9th win, 9.22.67. That was awfully tight pack right there in the top 10. And that's routed out by Miles Phillips, who comes in at 9.22.75. 75. So in a couple of minutes, we'll tell you about our high school girls field. It's led by a Tennessee state record holder. All the way from Northeast Tennessee, Jenna Hutchins takes the track when we come back at the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival.
10 was Miles Phillips. 11, So after all of that, then there was one more race. The Elliptico Girls 3200 meter run is up next, and it's going to conclude what's been a great day here at the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival. Welcome back into Lipscomb Academy. Glad to have you along with us as you watch here on our YouTube stream. My name is Will Bowling. Have really enjoyed getting to talk with you tonight. Appreciate the comments. Appreciate the interaction from you all as you watch. Track and field once again. Boy, does it feel nice to be able to say that. Been waiting a long time to finally get to race and watch some left turns again. So this next race is going to feature one of the all-time best in the state of Tennessee, representing here for the Volunteer State, Jenna Hutchins, making the five-plus hour drive from Johnson City, Tennessee. As a freshman, she had perhaps the best freshman season in Tennessee history for a distance runner. Wins a couple of state championships, wins a cross-country state championship, sets a state record in the mile, and she's obviously not done yet. 2019, she broke that state record right here at this meet a season ago. Goes to Milrose this past indoor season, runs 426.77 for 1,500 and 448.00 for a mile indoors. She has had an outstanding career, a 443.33 one mile a season ago. Now she looks to continue her excellent running at 3,200. She's got a 10.15.39 personal best. She's one of five girls in the state of Tennessee to ever break 10.30 in the 3,200 meter run tonight. She'll look to take aim at 10 minutes Hoping to go below that mark. So 74s, 75s expected out of Hutchins tonight in this one. Flower Mound junior Natalie Cook, though, she's the top challenger. The Texas native has a 10-24-96 lifetime best, which she ran in the 2019 outdoor season. Carmen Alder, a rising senior from Pinecrest in North Carolina, she'll be here in the front of this race as well. She's got a 10-30-73 personal best. So she will be in the mix as well. Lily Cridge, Presley Miles, Luca Fulkerson, Caitlin Vanderkolk, Allison Newman round out what is an excellent field of high school girls. And we are off and running tonight, the final event of the evening. Under the lights in Music City, USA, eight laps around for these girls at 3,200 meters to finish off our 2020 meet schedule. we get started 
Billy Saveco, he's got an interview right now as well. Actually said, but. All right, here we go. So, what's up, guys? Billy Saveco here, and we're with. Who we got here? Who we got here? I'm Miles Phillips from North Carolina. I'm Jimmy Malarkey from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm Ian Noble from Florida. Amazing. So, we're seeing guys from everywhere, but they're here tonight. Nashville, Tennessee, Music City Distance Carnival. Talk about how cool that is to race. I know your guys' seasons were probably. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone's had their head down for 12 months, like, yeah. training away. I mean, although this is like an unusual circumstance, we haven't been doing track workouts and stuff really. I think everyone was anticipating this. We wanted this. Perfect. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, like, weird circumstances, you know, like everything's kind of thrown off, but like runners, we can just put in the work still and still practice like a lot of other sports can't. So, Good point. I mean, anything's better than nothing to come out here and race. Yeah. I've just been like, cross training has like really helped me out a lot. It's like all season, I had a couple of different things in my training, it's really paying off and I can tell out here on the track tonight. So you're running in August, yeah, that's way different for high school. Yeah, you know, yeah. pros go all the way to August or last year, Doha was September, October, but you know, you guys are in August. Was that any different or just did you finally want to race after such a long time of nothing? It's uh, different because it feels like there's a little more, like there's a little more stakes because we missed our track. It's on the season. line, yeah. It's yeah. the one chance, man. But, I mean, at, at the least, this is a time trial to see where we're at. And we yeah. all got PRs, so. Yeah, so we'll talk about that next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, same as him. Like, just to come out here and race, even though it's in August. I mean, a lot of people usually, like, aren't in shape by now. But we had all that off time to just train, you know, no school. Just PRs. What are your PRs yeah. what, tonight? Uh, tonight, I think I ran somewhere around 920, which is a 10-second PR. Woo! Yeah, I think yeah. I ran about 915. I ran 952, like, six months ago. So, yeah. What? I ran 932 in March, and I think I ran low 920s tonight. So. Amazing. There's some magic going down. You know, what was your... What was your guys' favorite thing you've seen? Were you, did you get a chance to watch some of the pros before? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. definitely the coolest part. Heck yeah. It was That's really cool watching Farrah run that 5K. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a monster, man. Incredible, bro. Yeah, the hottie toddy, man. I love those guys there. Van Hoy's got a good program at Old Miss. Um, he's cool. That was a big breakout for him. That was a minute PR for him. So, yeah. Music City Distance Carnival, PR Central, baby. Yes, um, what a, you know, that's the cool thing about running, too, is like, I was a big baseball guy, love basketball, love football, but I'm not going to be able to, like, play catch with Tom Brady or Peyton Manning where it's like yeah. you know you get to maybe cool down with Nick Willis you yeah, get yeah. to watch in the same warm-up area with Emma Colburn you know that's pretty yeah. incredible so I hope you guys understand that that's amazing and hopefully it motivates you guys for like what's next you know great, I think right. we're just grateful to be here shout out to David for putting this whole thing yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout shout out to MVP. yeah. incredible yeah. incredible we well, see guy. you guys again soon what's next are you guys um, probably done oh. I know yeah. there's not a lot of chances so. I, Florida's doing their season their cross-country season yeah okay it's I think be, I'm running a race in Terre Haute Okay. Race, uh, so. I think we have a couple like uh, invitationals coming up, but it's pushed back. Everything's pushed back, so just time to work and get better. All right, yeah. perfect, guys. Last thing we always do is one fun fact about yourself, non-running related. Hit right. me. I love watching anime, like Naruto. Heck yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> um, I'm really good at like doing like skateboard tricks. I can skate. So. Skate? What, yeah. What's your? So you doing what? What Tony Hawk do? Like a 960 or something? I'm not, not at that level yet. I think I can like kickflip. You know the basic stuff. Tony Hawk did some crazy. Uh, uh, trick and then he tried doing it like when he turned 50 or something again and he and it took him like all day but he finally did it yeah it's crazy on a good day i can throw down basketball really you can yeah. dunk yeah what on a good day on a good day oh yeah. we're, we're, we're testing that guys we're gonna have to get a <laughs> youtube video yeah, get it out there back. get justin knight out here yo yeah, is that your boy i'll follow up on justin knight oh, oh you heard it right here yo, hit me up i'll take you out jay money i went to syracuse dude i don't know man syracuse yeah. guys can ball wait we gotta say hi to one special person oh yeah jacob thompson Brought me down, what's it like, over a 30 second PR? I think no more, like 40 seconds. So if you're looking for a coach, hit him up on Instagram. That's right, brother. What is it, JT Cougar? Yeah, JT Cougs, something like that. Awesome. Go find him. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much, and we're going to give right. a big year, all right? One, all right. two, three. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was all amazing, right, bro. All right, thanks, Billy. Back with you for this 3200. Jenna Hutchins looking to make it two for two on state records. She's already got 1,600. Now she wants 3,200, and that mark is held right now by Rebecca Story of Christian Academy of Knoxville at 959.8. Hutchins now leading, and she is on a roll. 455 through 1,600, so four laps to go, and she looks very strong right now, just right behind the pacer who's continuing to take her out and keep her on pace for that sub-10 mark. Looking to become just the second girl in Tennessee history to break 10 minutes in the 3200. Hutchins, we mentioned her outstanding freshman campaign of 453-1600 before she then 
broke that mark at Music City Distance Carnival. A 16.38 5K personal best that she ran at Nike Desert Twilight back in September at the middle of that 2019 cross-country season. Finishes off with a Footlocker South victory in 16.54. Now looking to add to her decorated resume as perhaps the best Tennessee distance runner ever in the high school ranks despite entering her junior year just about a week ago. So Hutchins now breaking away from the rest of this pack. She is taking control of this one. And now it's just a matter of how fast can she go. 6'10", with 800 to go, the pacer steps off. Now it's the Jenna Hutchins show. Welcome one and all. Natalie Cook, she is sitting in second right now. Just about seven or eight seconds behind Hutchins. Behind her, you've got Mia Proc, who just finished her freshman year of high school. So she's going to turn in a really nice time as well. But Hutchins right now really looking strong and hoping to break another Tennessee state record as she enters her junior year as a hilltopper at Science Hill High School. Not long to go now for Hutchins. A little over 900 meters remaining for her. And just look at that gap that she has already opened on the rest of the field. Almost a, a foregone conclusion now that this is likely going to be her etching her name in the record books once again. 7.18 now. We'll see what her time is at Two to go. 7.24. So came in around 4.55 in that first mile. Still right on pace. That was a right at about a 2.30 on the last 800. So now she's on pace for about 9.55. It's what she's looking at starting her junior year of high school. That would put you at the top of a lot of leaderboards in a lot of states in this country. Hutchins, obviously, from Tennessee now, originally from the state of Texas, bringing that Texas speed with a little bit of volunteer state flair to it. Now stick around with us right after she finishes as well. We'll make sure to get the times of everybody else in this race on the leaderboard, but certainly tough to track everybody when Hutchins is just so far ahead on a camera shot of her own. So she'll make this turn for the penultimate time, heading into her final lap in what is going to be awfully close to a new Tennessee state record here in the final race of the night at the 2020 Music City Distance Carnival. 8.38 with 400 meters to go as she makes the final turn into the final lap and let's see how quick she can go reminder again that it's CAK's Rebecca story she ran it back in 2017 959.8 that record has stood for three years Hutchins is number two on the list is awfully close to climbing it here tonight in Nashville. What has been an unorthodox season, a crazy season. Now this becomes cross-country prep, and this is also a sign that Hutchins looks primed and ready to make another run at a second state championship in cross-country as well. 150 to go, 30 seconds separating her and another state record in the state of Tennessee. Making the final turn, here she comes all the way from Johnson City, Tennessee. Hutchins is your winner. That quick stride, the pace quickening just a little bit more over the final 100, the final 50, and she, going into her junior year, is the new Tennessee state record holder. The class of 2022, but she doesn't wait till then to etch her name once again into state immortality. 949.83, the new gold standard to beat in the state of Tennessee all time. 10 seconds off of Rebecca Story's previous best. Hutchins at a mile and at two miles stands alone in the volunteer state. 
Natalie Cook is going to finish second here, 10-16-07. An excellent race for her as well. She'll leave with an excellent time. That's eight seconds better than her previous best. Mia Prock at 10.20.18. Luca Fulkerson at 10.20.48. You've got Lily Cridge fifth, Angie Allen sixth in 10.35. Carmen Alder takes seventh in 10.36. Faith Duncan, your eighth place runner, finishing in 10.42.59. Madison Schultz, 10.47.32, as you see the top nine on your screen right there. State record and meet record. Hutchins, once again, stands alone in the state of Tennessee. So an excellent final couple of laps, an excellent final mile. Hutchins went unofficially about 4.55 and then 54 or 53. It was awfully good, whatever it was, and it's better than anybody else, like I've said a, a couple of times, from the state of Tennessee. So Jenna will catch up with our own Billy Saveco coming up in a moment. But want to wrap a bow on what has been an excellent meet tonight. Dave Milner's done an excellent job. Primetime timing, helping us out here, doing awesome work for us as well. See a couple more of those times there. Caitlin Vanderkolk, she's a local name from Brentwood High School, getting under 11 minutes. Allison Newman from St. George's Independent School, defending champ from D2 single A out of Memphis as the lights go down as well here in Lipscomb. So Newman, she just shy of 11 minutes, 11.07, but 17 girls under 11 minutes tonight. What a way to finish what has been an excellent night here in Nashville. So we'll wait for Jenna to make her way to chat with Billy Sveco. And now let's throw it over now to Billy, who's got another report for us. All right, here we go. We see Mr. Cody over there waving his hand. That means we're live. YouTube hitting it up. Mr. Braddock here. He was the winner of that 3200 for the high school guys. 854. He said that was how much of a PR? If, uh, 12 seconds. 12 seconds. Yeah. Insane. What was what was the magic tonight? Um, pacer was perfect through five laps. Um, and then I just heard footsteps the whole time, and I was like, I gotta go. Yeah, I got yeah. I gotta keep keep the, keep pushing the gas. So, so you, I don't know. You know, high school. I don't see too many rabbits happening all the time. Yeah. How cool was that? And so was that your first time having a rabbit? Um, yeah, yeah, it was my first time. And I mean, that's that's a huge advantage, I think, to running fast. Having just looking at the back of someone's jersey it and just, so just going after. Jump it. on that and hold on. Yeah. Right? yeah. So uh, what were you expecting? You know, you said you did a time trial that was pretty good, but it wasn't it wasn't official, so yeah. it still counts like a 12 second PR. But talk about, you know, what were you looking for? Um, I was looking. I mean, I, I like to be super uh, hey, optimistic, so I'm wrong. like, let's break 850. You know, we're Nothing gonna go crazy. Um, and then, you know, anything anything under the PR though is a bonus, uh, or like a, a win for me. So 854, I'm really happy with that. That's Can't amazing. Complain. That's amazing. What's next? Are you done? Um, we're gonna keep keep going. I mean, we, we were kind of planning for cross country yeah. um, in New Jersey. It's not looking too good. Yeah, yeah. So so we were still like kind of strength building, and we're like, you know, see where we're at fitness wise. Um, so we're hoping to run something in December, you know, instead so of NXN, and yeah. uh, still get another chance to run fast. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. What yeah. is, uh, you know, how cool is it? I've been asking all the high schoolers. You guys get to, you guys got to rub elbows kind of with like Corey McGee. You got Emma Colbert, Nick Willis is here, Robbie Andrews is watching in the stands. Talk about how cool that is. Um, it was, it was really cool because you know I'm warming up. And I'm like, oh shoot, like that's that's Joe Cluck here, you know, yeah. whoever. Like I'm just jogging, warming up, and they're they're doing their strides or cooling down, and just like you know being. Like being in the same atmosphere is really, really cool, Incredible. and seeing the way they go about things. Incredible. Who, what was your favorite performance or favorite thing you saw tonight? Um, Besides this amazing PR. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the only race, other race I saw was that girls' 32, okay. and that was that was pretty quick. They were oh, moving. Um, insane. I want to go back and watch some of the replays because I heard some other guys run fa ran fast. So. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah were, I'm excited had, um, to, uh, to see how else ran. She's from Connecticut, uh, Rhode Island. She mm -hmm. ran 202 as a wow. ninth grader. That's crazy. I don't so. think I was running that as a ninth grader. I don't think so. I run that now. Yeah. So, uh, okay, one fun fact about yourself, non-running related. Oh, let's see. Um, this time last summer, I was, you know, I saw, saw like a memory thing pop up. Yep. I, I was playing baseball, travel, travel baseball. That's my favorite thing with position. Um, 
pitcher. And, pitcher? Uh, yeah, catcher. got moved to a pitcher only, unfortunately. No oh. hitting for me, but, no hitting. but I was having fun, but can't beat this. So. And what's your team then if you live in New Jersey? Um, I was on some travel team. No, I'm talking about MLB. Oh, Mets. Mets. Oh. Gotta go Mets. Good man, good man, good man. All right, man, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. your time, and thank we'll you. see you soon. Yeah. Cheers, brother. I think Jenna's up next. Are you ready? You can take your time. Tie your shoe. What was that, 849? What? Oh, 949, my bad. 849, my bad. 949, and that was what, third all time? Second or third all time. Here we are, Jenna, how you doing? Good. Amazing, so wait, I know you're fast, but were, were you expecting that? Uh, well, I know I'd been um, training really hard, um, just doing some just really um, normal cross country type stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I didn't really know this meet was gonna happen until a little bit later, so um, I was really excited for it and just wanted to try my best. Awesome, and you know, it's in your home state, so you gotta defend that, that Tennessee flag on your chest right yeah. there. You know, talk about how cool that was to do that. You know, I saw your family, some of your family members were here and in your home state. Yeah, it was um, just amazing to have the support and just to be able to represent Tennessee in general. Um, I've been looking forward to this meet for the past couple weeks. So yeah. just having all that additional support and like their great event staff um, out here just made it for an amazing race. That's awesome. So. What were you expecting? I think I asked you that, but what were you? What was the race plan or expecting? The rabbits helped a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, uh, well, Dave had told me that you know there was going to be a rabbit there helping and uh, helping the pace. So um, I definitely just wanted to try to stick with them. And, yeah. Um, I had never broken ten before, so that was Woo! really that was really the main goal. But I had a um, feeling that I could um, go a little bit faster than that based off my training. So I just tried to stick with the rabbit and uh, finish strong. Awesome. So have you been training pretty hard right now? Or are you kind of getting ready for cross country? Where are you in your training cycle? Yeah. Well, um, the last race I did before this was um, at Milrose in February. Oh, I was there. I saw you. Yeah. So um, after that, um, I took actually a couple weeks off of uh -huh. like no running and just doing some light cross train stuff. And I've just been going um, pretty slow and easy actually, just um, kind of getting ready for cross country. Yeah. And um, yeah, just the rest of the season. So nothing too hard. That's awesome. And you and you just PR'd by that much. So when you get into the hard workouts, you might be yeah. killing it. Yeah. What is so with that happening? I think that was second or third all time. You know, when you put your names, no pressure, but when you put your names up to people like Caitlin Tui, you know, that's got to be kind of cool. You yeah. know, what, what's your next goal? Um, for sure. Well, um, it's so just such an honor to be able to be mentioned up there with them, yeah. and um, that means a lot too. And then also, um, I guess my goals, um, Tennessee right now is um, on schedule for having a cross country season. Woo! Let's do so, it. So um, yeah, so I'm super excited. Uh, I'm getting ready for that, and um, just hopeful for the season. And um, after this, I don't really have um, any races on schedule yet. Just seeing what comes up, and uh, just continue to get ready for cross country season. Awesome. So what was the coolest thing? You know, you just had a huge PR. That was amazing. But what was the coolest thing? that was not about your race that happened today? You know, did, did you get to see Emma? Did you get to see Ollie Orr? What, what was the cool thing? Yeah, um, well, I definitely got to, uh, we got out here a little early and watched some of the pro races, so that was a lot of fun. And then just um, talking to a lot of the girls from out of state here have been um, has been really cool too, just because so many people coming from so many different areas to run yeah. this, since it's one of the few races. Um, but yeah, earlier today, we just um, had fun exploring Nashville and doing some fun things around here. That's awesome. All right, one fun fact about yourself, non-running related. I've been asking everyone that. Um, let's see, I've lived in three different states. I've lived in North Carolina, I saw Tennessee, Tex and Texas. Texas. I saw, yeah, yeah, your Instagram, Texas. Yeah, when we moved to Texas, I, uh, that's when I got my Instagram, so I've just never changed it. Never changed it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, that was amazing. I hope to see you soon, and uh, great job, great yeah, job. Thank you. Yeah, good job. We're going to grab a picture real quick, actually. Is this cool? Yeah, sure. And then we're going to grab Kevin for an interview, too. Here we go. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> you guys are watching this live on the stream. What's up, YouTube? What up? <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. you, man. Thank you. Yep, Hope you to see too. you soon. Yep, yeah. I have that jersey coming on the way. Sorry, you couldn't good. wear it. No, you're good. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate you. Yep. All right. You want to jump on? You want to talk? You. Just come in, bro. So, my buddy over here, Kev. He plays some. He does some cool music stuff. He lives in Nashville. Goes to Brentwood. I actually rabbited him for a race. Uh, what was that? An 800. <laughs> yes. I, I showed up late. I'm sorry, but me, Craig Angles, Ryan Manningham were in town, yeah. and we did that. And now he's here. His sister was here. I don't think she wants to talk. Uh, yeah, well, I think she went to cool down. Okay, but, okay, yeah. cool. So talk about your race today. How was that, man? You were in no man's land for a long time. I was. Um, you know, I haven't raced in six months, so, I mean, this is a great. It's, yeah. It's fun to be out here. I mean, it's we're just taking all the opportunities we exactly. can get. Um, it's good to get our legs back under us. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's um, not ideal, but, I mean, we're just rolling with what, what's coming at us so. yeah well how was the event today though was it cool yeah fun? it was yeah it was really fun um i i mean i hit my what i did for our pr earlier yeah. so i mean i'm right right on track it was hard to run in no man's land but 
um, you know, you just got to push through it. So. Nice to race again, though, right? You got to yeah. be happy about yeah. that. Not many just people get the opportunity, and it's in your hometown. Yeah, I'm just glad to be racing again. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, I was gonna say one fun fact about yourself, not running related, but talk about your music. Then. Oh yeah. Um, well, I'm a singer. Um, I mean, baby, baby. <laughs> Nashville's a great spot uh, for that. So, yeah, it's fun. Um, Give them a hit, man. Take where where, you, where do they find you? Um, yeah, uh, you can follow my Instagram, hey. at, uh, Kevin Culk Music. Um, yeah, I have a few songs out on Spotify, iTunes, whatever. He's but, good. He's being modest. Yeah. He's a beast. He's a beast. It's fun. Awesome, man. One fun fact about yourself, non-running and non-music related since you did that. Um, I was a gymnast for 10 years. Can you do before. a backflip? Oh, no. <laughs> no? Not anymore. It's been, it's been 10 years. I don't know if I can do a backflip anymore, but. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, mate. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon, all right? Thank you. Cheers, buddy. Yep, thanks. Good to see you. Yep, tell your dad and sister I said hello. All right, so uh, Cody, I think we're about to be done over here, right? If he hasn't already pulled me up. Oh, wait, we got one more. One more. Second place? Second place girl. What was what was your time? Come on in. 57. Level. 57? Yeah. 857? Yeah. And you never broke nine, right? Didn't anyone before today never broke nine in the field, right? No. Yeah. That's amazing. So what was the difference today? Uh, I mean, it's just one, the pacer was um, great help, and then having a the 853 um, then with the New Jersey kid Braddock yeah yep, he did really awesome so that pushed me um, to get a better time yeah you guys were you guys were going right out of there for yeah, almost the whole thing sure. and then have you ever had a rabbit you know that's different for pros every almost every thing that's not a championship race they have rabbits I feel like y'all don't have rabbits that much in high school no we really don't how big of a benefit was that uh, that was absolutely a huge benefit knowing that you know you don't have to do all the work and someone else is doing it. all you have to do is just sit behind them and then and then, you know, when they take off and, and then it's your turn to finally finish it, the yeah. last three laps or two. And so with that, um, so like I'm just so thankful that, you know, he was there to help us today. And that was a definitely incredible help. So. Yeah, man. Did, was that the goal was to break nine? Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah, so. Would you think you'd break it by that much? That's that's big. Uh, well, I, our goal was to break nine no matter what it was. What it was like 859.99. Yeah, that's I mean, a like, but um, it's an 18 second PR from outdoors. What? So. I'm just uh, blessed to to know that you know it was blessed. just an incredible night for me. So a new experience, knowing that finally I I met my goal and uh, with the help that I had. So. Yeah, and we have thousands of people on this stream too. So there's not much going on, and you were on this stream, the same stream that, like I said, all your Emma Colburn. Who else we have? Nick Willis is amazing. How cool was that? To, did you see any of them up there? I've been yeah. asking every high school yeah. the same question, but. Uh, well, I did, and um, it's really awesome. It means that you know I'm thankful that. Um, I get to be like you know part of that, yeah. And, um, and so it's definitely a legacy to follow. So. Absolutely, it's like motivating, right? You yeah, get to exactly. see them in there. You're in the same shoes almost, right? Absolutely. So. Awesome. So what's next? Are you done? Uh, I mean, for track, yes, we are. Next yeah. is cross country, and so we're getting ready. Tuesday. 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 Meet. Yep. Uh oh, what? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that was a good test for your Tuesday <laughs> meet, man. That's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Amazing. So uh, one fun fact about yourself, non-running related. I'm asking all the same questions, but it's because it's fun. Um, I'd say I am from originally from Ethiopia, so I've been adopted. Amazing. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. That's amazing. So if you were to run, would you run for Ethiopia or the United States? Oh, you don't know yet? You know, I, you got I've, time. I've actually thought about that. I mean, yeah. if I had the opportunity, I would definitely love to represent Ethiopia. It'd be but, amazing, yeah. But if I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm still still happy to represent America. So. Awesome, man. Hey, well, it's great to see you, man. Thank you, brother. I can't believe this patch didn't fall off the whole race. Uh, I was I like, how did that not <laughs> fall off? But that was amazing. Thank you so much. Yep, thank we you. better see you soon, all right? Absolutely. Good luck with your race in like three days. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll see you, man. Thank Have you. Cheers. All right, I think now we're officially done, guys. I don't know if the stream's still running, but I love you guys very much. You don't have to go home, but you can stay here. Uh, Music City Distance Carnival, it's in the books, baby. It was phenomenal, and it was not like every meet. You know, it wasn't like every year, but we made it the best we possibly could, and I think it was something that was going to hopefully maybe open other things up, maybe change the sport in a different way for whatever happens in the, in the pure carnival future because we don't know what's going to happen. Um, but I was truly blessed to be a part of this. I was blessed you guys put up with me for all this whole time. And I hope we brought some fun, some exciting things to you guys. And next weekend, if you want to see some more action and you want to put up with me, we are going to be in Memphis, Tennessee, because we have that Ed Murphy Classic. You're going to see a lot of the same people that ran right here. They're fit. They're already down in Tennessee. They're going to try to run again fast. I think Bryce Hopple's coming in that 800 against Michael Cerrone. I don't know if we can get Don Brazier. It might be tough. But those other two guys are definitely going to be there. And... Uh, Kayla Edwards flashed off her two flat 800. She's going to be in the women's 800 as well. 
It's going to be amazing, guys, and I hope you're part of it. Keep the sport alive. Keep the energy going. And you know what they always say, never stop running. All right, guys. Billy Sveco signing out. We'll see